Hi guys, I just wanted to jump on here with little Bo. Say hey, Bo. Hi. Okay. Um, and we just wanted to let everyone know about our upcoming live shows. Ooh. We have several coming up. The first one is Queers Live. Bo, tell them. Oh, babe, it's inspired uh, from the very inspired by I should say. Yeah, it's the very by. first <laughs> queer a uh, divas live, uh, starring all your favorite divas. But we're just uh, putting a little queer spin on it. We're gonna have uh, so many great people: Larry Owens, Cole Scola, Josh Sharp, Aaron Jackson. Uh, yes, Peter Smith. Peter Smith and. And more to be announced, more queers. More to be announced, musical directed by the one and only Henry Kapersky. Ooh. This is on Monday, November 26th at Joe's Pub. The one and only. It's our very first ever Las Culturistas show at Joe's Pub. We love the folks over there. We're going to be, so you know, recording a little video promo for it in the coming mm. weeks. You might see it. And you can get tickets at the Joe's Pub website. So please head over and do that. And then we have the gag, of course. It's I Don't Think So Honey Live at the Bell House on November 30th. Yes, this is going to be um, a pretty new batch of folks. We are mm. really going to uh, show you some new faces, darling. Our last one was like a Legends Ball type gig, but this is going to be such a fun, fresh experience. It's going to be so great. I can't wait for it. Yeah. You got to get your tickets to our I Don't Think So Honey Live at the Bell House on November 30th. And if you're on the West Coast, honey, I'm coming to you and I'm going to be doing I Don't Think So Honey Live at the Regent in downtown LA on December 5th. The lineup will be announced shortly, as will the Bell House lineup, but this is going to be so much fun. I loved our show that we did at Echoplex. It was so fun. I can't believe I'm missing this one. Uh, But you know what? It's for a good reason. Okay. Which is your wedding to yourself. Yes. Just kidding. He has work. Um, So listen, I cannot wait. And then, selfishly, I want to just plug a little show that I do here in New York City at the Duplex. It's called Have You Heard of Christmas? Oh, I love this show. Thank you, baby. I'm really excited. It's going to be on December 11th, December 18th, and December 22nd. So I'm going to do that show three times. And I really want you guys to come. You can get tickets, um, which are on sale right now. Ooh, those are the shows, and that's the gauntlet. Special guests. Special guests. And that's musical directed by Henry Kapersky as well. Yes. Oh, I can't wait for all of these shows. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be at three out of four of them for yeah, sure. Honey. So uh, please get those tickets and check them out. Yes. Forever. <laughs> Dog. Look, man. There. Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, my. Bowen, look over there. Wow. Is that Ooh. culture? Oh, yes. My goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las Culturistas. Ding dong. Las, Las Culturistas, Culturistas calling. And we were late to the studio today, and our guest was furious because Bowen had to make his rice. <laughs> this is a PR disaster. This I've is... never been d- slandered this way on social media. No one ever came for me because I didn't tell the whole truth. What? And that's rule of culture number 13. What does that even mean? No one ever, ever came, came for me because, because I didn't tell the whole truth. truth. Lots of reasons to read me, but you know what? You can't say I'm not a truth-telling bitch, capital B. Wait. Okay. I can't, we, we can't parse this out right now. <laughs> I will I, expose you. I don't know what that means. I, was I don't making know my words, but I do know my heart. I was making short rib kimchi fried rice for all of us to complimenting eat. himself all the way no i was gonna make it for all of us to eat after this after this recording but you're, you're gonna go off to caveat um and for game show my for show. game show and joel joel's invited to come over our guest is invited to come over afterwards and play slaparazzi on mario party oh my god wait now i have to come what yeah <laughs> okay wait you guys here's a, this is a las culturistas um endorsement yes so super mario party on nintendo super switch. mario party on nintendo switch it's the best mini game in mario party history it's called slaparazzi it, you basically go explain it so uh, there's a circular platform that all f- all four characters are on competitors are on and there's five different stands where a koopa with a camera will appear at random <laughs> and your job is to the goal is to Go as close as possible to the camera and slap away your competitors to see who can get most centered. In <laughs> you the photo. slap them out of the way for the intention of this Koopa photographer. And what's the name of the girl? The- Rosalina. Rosalina. Okay, so there's this new character, Rosalina, who's like in the same world as Peach and Daisy. Like she's obviously some sort of princess, but she's got an asymmetrical bang, honey. Yeah, she's glamorous. And she's nine feet tall, and it's impossible for her to not win this game. And Dave Mazzoni was playing as Rosalina, and he kept winning. It was so funny. Rosalina was just looking stunning in front of the camera. And every action shot, even when she was being slapped away, she looked, she looked stunned. fierce. She looked fierce. Um, oh my goodness, we're making history again with this episode. Can you believe it's a three-peat? It's a three-peat. This is the first ent- entry into the three-timers club. <laughs> We're making history again. We're making history again. <laughs> as we says, always... We, we're well-behaved women. Rarely, rarely make, make history. history. And are we well-behaved? It's actually no, rule no. of culture number one. <laughs> well well-behaved behaved women, women rarely <laughs> make history. <laughs> That's how Marilyn said it, too. With that little coquettish, coquettish affect. Honestly... 
Front runner for title of hep. Well behaved women. Okay, let's just see what the guests bring. <laughs> three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, we're literally three minutes in. I'm just saying it's a front runner at this time. We've been doing the episode for three minutes, and at this time, it's a front runner. Just like Lady Gaga in the Best Actress race. Oh. And I knew that would get get our guests a little steamed. This is our deep dive into a star's born. We'll talk about other things. Like a as clam well. in a hot bucket. But uh, this is our first three time guest. He's one of our dearest friends. He is. Uh, one of the most preeminent minds in comedy right now, I would say. I would say. say when it comes to minds, preeminent. Preeminent. Honestly, mind, body, face. Hair, mind, body, face. Hair, body, mind, face. Hair, body, and mind, face. She missed the fourth one. A man loves a quadruple threat. Mm-hmm. He uh, has his wonderful show, Joy Fuck Club, uh, as part of New York Comedy Festival, November, November 9th, yes, Friday. Uh, I might be in it. Who knows? It's going to be all Asian comedians. Can I say musicians. something? If yes. you're not on the bill, I would gag. <laughs> I would say that's a revolutionary that would be a stunt. for Joel to not book Bowen for the Joy Fuck Club. Yes, but he's—I mean, we're—he's—he's he's booked mostly the lineup from San Francisco when he when we did this at Cluster when he did this at Cluster Fest. One of the my one of my favorite that shows. was my favorite show at the festival. So fun, so great. Um, and I say that, and we had a show in the festival. <laughs> and I still like Joel's better. And I would say Joel was robbed uh, in Gauntlet to Gag. I would say. I mean, look. <sighs> If we're looking back and we're going to like relitigate the whole thing, it was pretty much a robbery that he didn't move on to at least the next round. I agree. I agree. We'll, Go back and listen to it. We'll get we'll get into this with him. Um, you can sound off in the comments. And uh, Joel will also um, maybe be co-hosting the LA version of I Don't Think So Honey with you. We hope so. It's we a, hope it's, so. Again, it's in litigation right now. It's in litigation. <laughs> it's in the courts, um, <laughs> which have been changed irrevocably. Under this administration, absolutely. Wow, I haven't seen you since the Cav hearings. Oh, I, it's been a while. We haven't we haven't done a live episode in, in studio, and we haven't recorded in a, in a bit because you have your new um, gig. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, since since then the world's turned upside down. We found out the world's ending. But let's bring in our guest. Let's bring in our guest. It. This is uh, one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> Mine so too. Glad we got that off the top. <laughs> um, one of my favorite people in the world. Welcome, Joel Kim, Kim Booster. Booster. Wow. wow, what an intro. <laughs> yeah, here on your second favorite podcast. Oh. You didn't think I Ooh. would wait, did you? Joel. Ooh. Joel has a new favorite podcast. It is. It's still in the Forever Dog cinematic universe. Sure. It is. I, it, you used to call it the Los Culturistas cinematic universe. It's incredible, the disrespect. <laughs> and now it's been de- demoted. We've been demoted. <laughs> Truly been demoted. The scope is he, I got. We got dinner the other night. He was. I. I think I was the first person he saw in this great city. <laughs> Not true. And he, <laughs> and he looked me in the eyes and said, I'm recording my my favorite podcast tomorrow. And I knew that we weren't recording with him until Friday today. And I said, oh, okay. Joel, that's hurtful. The timeline is completely wrong here, by the way. <laughs> Not the first person that I saw Time on Sunday. Time is a flat circle. Then you, tomorrow, I don't know. You're <laughs> such, such a sensationalist. Um, I... <laughs> I love this podcast. You know, this podcast will always be my favorite. But I have to say, I moved to LA a year ago, and I, I, I rely on these podcasts to spend time with my friends you while I'm driving this. around my car. And your podcast has simply gotten too big. You're getting big names like Scott Thompson and Shangela, and, and aren't they like, your friends? They are not my friends. Okay, I am their friend. They are not my friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but and it's just right now, Cat and Pat. They're having on all my friends okay. and that I get is comforting it. to me I guess Joel is saying to Cat and Pat you know stay small don't go too big yeah, yeah, no, yeah I mean, don't I, dream uh, if you were, if you listen to my episode of their podcast I did say that to their faces <laughs> and they did find it to be very offensive <laughs> so although oh, I can't wait to listen to that but by the time this comes out that'll have come out yeah, hopefully. Be, yeah you'll be all over the Forever Dog Airwaves did, yeah. you, do, you, did you do Unofficial Expert and I did Unofficial Expert <sighs> I did so the woman who books all the Forever Dog podcast guests she said hey when are you in town and I said oh, Actually, I'll pull up the email if you guys are fucking butthurt about me having a new favorite podcast. But she said, uh, we'd love to get you on some of the other podcasts. And I said, I don't want to be on any of them. <laughs> some, uh, I was like, I don't want to be on some other podcasts. I was like, if I have to, I was like, Lost Call Traces is priority number one. And if I have time, I'll do seek treatment. And then I was like, and then you can choose a third. <laughs> and on oh my expert, God. And I think it's a great choice. It's a great choice. It was. Very it was the choice. right choice. 
I think out of everything on the network, I, was, I feel like that's what I want to hear is you, Lucy, and Marie. I was oh, it was so fun. Yeah, they're um, the best. They are the funniest people. And um, I was being a little bitch, but Thank you. I knew what I wanted and I asked for it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That's exemplary. It means exactly. A lot. So, oh, Joel, how is this? I, I we're, we're literally catching up because I was very late, and I'm sorry, and I apologize. That's fine. Uh, how was this ASOS event last night? The ASOS event I was can't. fine. Um, it was they. The thing is, is they. Asked for RSVPs. They knew how many people were coming to the event, and they still chose to have it in the smallest space <laughs> imaginable. That was truly. It was like a. It was like a Z-shaped room, so it was mostly hallway. Um, and oh my a God. Z-shaped room. It was so bizarre. Was this, fucking <laughs> so, elf nowhere. It, yeah, it really did I'm feel sorry. like a like a Stephen King novel. You just couldn't <laughs> move. There was literally like tables in the middle of every room. Um, but it was great. Uh, everyone who was cool and hip and dressed as well was there. Well, I'm but... sorry, but we were not invited. And I'm a f- weird frequent ASO shopper. Hello, I'm... I own several garments from ASO. ASOP. <laughs> no, here's the thing. Oh, wow, Patty ASO. Harrison famously did <laughs> a branded uh, SponCon with uh, ASOS, and she told me that they corrected her and said it's actually pronounced ASOS, ASOS? which I said no. no. It's, yeah. You you were saying it's like a gift gif thing. It's a gift gif sh- situation. I don't give a shit. There, if it's supposed to be gif. No, it's there's gif, gif. there's it's gif. not a soul that says a sauce, and they need to know that. No, but yeah. they are British. They're a British company. A sauce. A sauce. Yeah, I know a they're sauce. fucking British because they always default me to the UK, and and they show fucking pounds even after I tell them after the millionth time I'm that I'm American. American. I'm American. I'm an American. I am American. 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 I'm just like you and Sue. Thank you. Wait, I just want to say that there's been a lot of slander about ASO, ASOS. We love them. This no. Thus far on the episode, and I just want to say it because I like a new coat. I love ASOS, and I would go to any other events. Truly wearing head-to-toe ASOS right now. There you go. I like um, that shirt a lot, actually. Thank you. It is just a plain tee that got fucked up in the wash, and now people think it's better. Isn't really? That, yeah. It is chic, Is that though. a plain? Was it a white tee? No, it was just a beige tee. Oh, okay. What a great segment for uh, as, I've, really, no, as I've always said podcasts medium. are visual medium, medium. Uh, medium also I'm looking at you wearing it and I'm like oh it's just that I wish I had like a good body. body yeah okay okay well, well what are you what are we gonna do not talk about it I you, you know, walking around with it this is you walking around with this body this is erasure. all this body this is erasure <laughs> I feel like I, this is so I this is like always the time of year almost that I've recorded this podcast with you guys and oh, every true. single year when I record this podcast, I am like coming either out of a depressive phase into a manic phase or have just been yelled at um, by a good friend's boyfriend. <laughs> so, so no, what? <laughs> Wait, so where are you Wait, right now? Um, I think I'm, 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 as I was the same time last, this time last year, I, exiting a dark phase, yes. I think. And the year before that, I was yelled at by our good friend's birth boyfriend. Um, Who? Do you oh remember? God. Wait, wait. Oh! oh wow. <laughs> Keep it in, Megan. I, just, I see I you with that just, pen in your hand. Keep it in. Keep it in I always just like float, like float into this podcast recording, and I'm always just like, uh, I'm always very, like, very so raw. stressed. I'm sweating, and I'm just like, okay, <sighs> let's talk through this. You know what? I you know what you know what happened in therapy today that I, I'm fucking obsessed with. I was venting. I was like, I don't know. Like, I just got dumped this week, and work is kind of crazy, and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And then like, I'm, I'm always calling those things into question. I'm always second guessing myself in those areas. And then she goes, okay, tell me one area in your life that you are certain about that you never question ever. And I was like, oh God, do I have anything? And then I said, my friends, my friendships, Mm. I never question. Friendship is lovely. And then she asked why. And I said, because she was, she was, why do you think that is? And and I said, because uh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to have them. And it's, they've just I've invested a lot of time into them and it's just been a, a matter of time and volume mm-hmm. and, and she was like well great then that might apply to other areas as well I was like oh great so Joel this is just to, just for you to say maybe have the same exercise where you're just you just examine the things that you are certain about and then I don't know I'm not I, I sound like therapy? fucking Oprah are you in therapy uh, I, I was when I before I moved to LA mm-hmm. and then um, you know, we had like many relationships. I had to say goodbye. Um, yeah, right. And <laughs> now I'm trying to find one in LA, but it's tough. I'm I'm on the road like three weekends out of yeah like, three weeks out of the month usually, and so it's hard to like mm. keep that relationship alive. It's hard yeah. to keep any relationship alive. It is. It is. You know. And um, you know, that's but that's. 
that's an investment in a relationship that you would make. I know, but I honestly, like, I I found it so hard. It took me years in New York to find a therapist that mm-hmm. I vibed with because it's always, it's, it is like date. It's like dating. Yeah. And I would always get these people who were, I, and this is, this is awful to say, but I just kept meeting therapists that were dumber than me. And it was just <laughs> really frustrating to something like, you could unpack to with have, a good therapist. To, yeah. And it was just like, <laughs> ugh, like, and they were, it was just like making the most basic observations. Yeah. Uh, and like, and I was like, let me uh, do a co- shortcut from you. I'm going to say this, which is covering for this. And it is a total fabrication because this is how I'm really feeling. Oh and you're going to tell me this. And then I'm going to reach this point. Yeah. Can I go now? <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, who is that like? That's like a character. That's like a famous character. <laughs> Someone that's way ahead of everyone else. Yeah, like like a... Like a, like a Dr. Eisenberg House. In the social network. Like, sort of like that. But it's like a Dr. House thing. It's like someone... Wait. <laughs> Can I say, speaking of characters, can I say, because I don't know who what you're fucking talking about, but I do know what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking right now about my favorite type of character in any movie, and me, Patty, and Sudi just went to go see Venom, and you were both, you were both famously invited to this showing of Venom, and you both pulled out minutes, I, hours I dumped, before. I got dumped that night. Um, And I got <laughs> blindsided by both the location and the time change. It so. was Williamsburg Cinemas at 10 p.m., and yeah. also, we would have gone earlier. Well, you guys said, I... We would have gone at 9 this is a, so electric for the listeners to hear. Just well, like, I'm just truly, saying, I'm just saying, like we all could have been there, and you all could have experienced what logistics. I'm about to say. This has really gone from like you interviewing Shangela <laughs> and Scott Thompson, like big names, to just three friends like talking nonsense. Well, just let saying, me like, just say wait, one thing because now got... I'm going to talk about culture. Okay, Venom. Venom has my favorite kind of character you could ever put in any movie, which is dumb fucking scientist Jenny Slate. Jenny Slate. <laughs> The only person who understood what movie she was in was Jenny Slate, who knew it was fucking stupid. And she was like, okay, yeah, so I'm a scientist, and clearly what you can see is we have here is uh, mutation, and uh, you know, like all these things, and she's saying these big ass words, huge ass words, and she's Jenny Slate. So, but, but she's a scientist, so we're buying into that. Great. <laughs> so she is like to, doing her thing, and then the character, and this is such a trope in these movies, which is scientists who can literally, in hours, create like magic science. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We we are gonna make what's the fucking call, symbiotic uh, mutation uh-huh, whatever uh-huh, occur uh-huh. in like on a whim like it's yeah. ready in days and then but they can't see even half a step in front of their own actions until they are dead fifteen minutes later like they just are so stupid. Did she die. Spoiler alert. She dies. Yes, honey. Oh, no, she Jenny. dies. And the way and this is how I know that she w- she knew exactly what movie she was in because she the character spoiler alert realizes she's gonna die and she goes no no (laughs) and it's just so funny and i'm not saying that i'm not saying that jenny slate is not fantastic in it. i think she is phenomenal in it because she knows what she she said no (laughs) and also there was truly some of her line readings i was like yeah you get this movie babe Um, (laughs) at least she tried something michelle williams didn't make any effort if you like if you like a, a dumb scientist in movies then i recommend The Predator which oh. is oh. toe to toe with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom as the worst movie I've seen all year you didn't even um, have fun watch- watching Fallen no, Kingdom I did not have a single ounce of joy in my body when I left that theater I was so mad I think you're right time. when that man turned around in the another pretty dumb scientist yeah. and he was like nasty woman I turned to my <gasps> friend <laughs> Sam and I, we screamed. We screamed in each other's faces and we could not believe that in the year of our Lord, 2018, 2018. they were making a nasty (laughs) woman reference in this fucking dinosaur movie. Here's how you know that like it's all just like truly a waste because there's that great moment in Jurassic World with Lapkus and um, Jake Jake Johnson. Johnson, Yeah. Which they're obviously I can't far believe in a way the best part of the movie. And Lapkus wasn't in Jurassic World. It's, it's Fallen it's, Kingdom. It, it, they should have been the stars. Yeah. Because the moment when he's going up to kiss her and she's like, oh, I have a boyfriend. That's like truly so, so smart. And I, I had never seen that before. Yeah. And I was like, there was someone who was capable of writing that joke in that scene. And like the rest of the movie is this. And I didn't hate Jurassic World. I hated Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, that wasn't even so fun. Rough. It was so rough. It was just... Oh, and but like honestly, I think the Predator might have been worse. Really? If you can imagine. If you can imagine. Did you see worse. Venom yet? No. No, I haven't seen Venom yet because famously <sighs> you changed the time yes. and the location. This is what the no. listeners want. More, uh, more, more. <laughs> Wait, who's the dumb scientist in the Predator? Olivia Munn. Yes! Oh, yes! Olivia yes! Munn. Yes! 
I stand Queen Olivia Munn. Queen Olivia. Do Olivia. you really? I actually do. I think she's. I love. I think she, I'm. I stand behind her with what she you Does. know did uh, during the press tour for the movie with you know with the the pedophile mm-hmm, the sex offender on mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on the set. I do, but I find her just a wet noodle. Just as a performer, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is so a lot of people think Aaron Rodgers is closeted. Right? Wow, and, they right. do. And oh yeah. Oh, I you never to, heard this. Room I guess room. this is like a real Midwest. Like this is a Chicago gay Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like um, <laughs> this was like if you were Phenomenon. if you were gay in Chicago in twenty like thirteen, you were very aware. Of is the he a Chicago Aaron. Bear? No, but he's he plays for the Packers, and so oh. Midwest. You know, Great. Sure. we're all aware. Yeah. Green Bay, um, Green but Bay I've sister. always said that like if you are going to have a beard, like make it someone that is completely invisible to gay men. And so in that way, Olivia Munn is the you, ideal beard. Wow. You, know? um, you are a coin. So, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> but it's just like, why? Ah! Like, all these. K-A-W-N-T. Corn. Like fucking like historical beards like Liza Minnelli. It's like, what are you thinking? Yes, of course you want to hang out with Liza, but right. it's so yes. obvious. I know. It's I mean, like... the best beard of all time, or not, not the best, but I think the most prolific beard of all time May actually be our sweet sister, Miss Democrat Party. Taylor Swift. (laughs) Miss Democrat Party. Miss Democrat Democrat Party. Party. (laughs) I think our community really made a mistake when we started calling uh, the women that gay men date to cover for themselves beards Beards. instead of wigs. (gasps) We should be calling them wigs. We can Uh, can actually, that's actually rule of culture number 61. We should should have been calling them them wigs. (laughs) Um, But we can change it. We'll change it, yeah. yeah we need By to change the culture. I don't know if we can, though, because now all these little gays are saying wig. wig. Yeah. Which. We're old now. We're old. Isn't that. Oh, it's dang. tough. It's tough. It's really hard to go to these colleges now and perform <laughs> in front of college Yeah, because they're all like, Charlie Puth. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Puth. A Charlie liquid Puth. you. <laughs> liquid you. Is it Nathan Puth or Puth? It's Puth. Puth. Oh, bitch. <laughs> it's Puth. <laughs> I couldn't care less if it's Puth, Puth, or Puth. Ah, I would love Puth. No, I, no, I don't. I don't love that. Don't love but the thing about, um, like as Pat says, these young girls is that, um, you know, we were we were them, but, but, but a decade ago. Yeah, and I, I guess I have to like, I always have to think when I go to these colleges and before I step out onto those stages. <laughs> I, I think to myself, <laughs> remember what you were like at twenty, and I was like, I was still like a real human being, mm-hmm. you know? yeah. And um, I, 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 it is this weird mental block in my head where I'm like, every time I go to a college, I'm like, they're not real. They don't know, <laughs> like, they don't care about me. I'm too old. Uh-huh. Like, I, half of the time when like one of the students is like, what do you want me to say about you before I bring you out? I'm just like, can you just like tell them that I know Jabuki Young White? <laughs> like, I feel like I feel like that will be, do more to endear me to them oh my God. than any anything else because um you don't know this though but your peers are there like i remember like when uh, during our were you there that night when we we went to the nyu welcome week to stand up and the headliner was michelle buteau oh yeah like it's it was it's weird now to like do shows with her you know what i mean and like know her and like i've worked with her a bunch but it's like it's just funny because like well there is a difference though and this is i mean maybe this is problematic but i will say there's like a difference but when i go to a school in like colby maine you know, uh-huh. to mm-hmm. going to NYU, yeah. Northwestern, yeah, or like sure. I was, I just did like a school in San Diego, La Jolla. You know, like yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah. Like there, I do think the energy is different, and like the lives that they're leading are a little bit. It's shorter. incredibly problematic of you to say, but I guess we have to agree. Yeah. But um, I think who knows? Like, there's a freshman at Haverford who's going to share the bill <laughs> with all of us in four years. What it do you think their name crazy. is? Um, Truman. <laughs> I I just got asked out on a well. <gasps> Ooh. I so what happened Ots? is is I worked on Ots? the show. I was working on the show and the showrunner's assistant and I vibed like the whole time I was shooting. Oh, I love that. And, yes. And then he's in L.A. too. And like I res- I said I said uh, Gorge. I commented Gorge on one of his <laughs> uh-huh. uh, Instagram posts and he DM me and he was like, Hey, I think we really got along really well. And like <gasps> uh, on set, and he was like, I would love to like hang out with you and oh. get a drink with you. Uh, do you want to go get a drink sometime with me? And I was like, sure. And so we exchanged numbers and we've been texting. And then it was his birthday last night. And I was like, oh, cute. And so I was like following along on his story. And then the last one just said, thank you to everyone who got me to 23. And I was like, (gasps) oh, no. (laughs) I don't think it matters. If you couldn't tell he was 20. Look, not that. He doesn't look 23. 23. Uh He looks older. Even even better. He looks about 25. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> the, gap, the, gap. <laughs> the gap. There's like lines on my face at 25 that weren't there yeah. at 23, bitch. 23 is the cusp for you. Like that's the. That's tough. No, I think I do think that's tough. I um I guess it's like different. I don't know. We'll see. Listen, when I was 27 dating a 23 year old, it was tough. And now I'm yeah. 30, and I, the thought of going for drinks with a. I mean, the thing is, is like, we'll probably just have sex. It's not a yeah, big deal. Yeah, like, just have it sex. is just like every time I find out someone's young now, I just want to like suck their fucking blood. Don't. You know, I, I mean, just... whatever. They're... What's the youngest person you've dated? Uh, I want to say, I'm not that young. I want to say, like, I rarely date people my own age. There's like, there's this guy, uh, there was this guy that was like 20. 23 yeah you date I'm, older point, you do i do yeah uh which i prefer me and sudi are on the same boat you like a crib keeper we like a crib i keeper. think i have always i have always <laughs> wanted to date someone 30 yeah and, and so now, like when i was 23 i was dating 30 year olds and now that i'm 30 i will date 30 year olds and i think when i'm 40 i'll still want to date 30 year olds so that's i think I've that's, been that's, running the, the, spectrum that's, the gay man, that's the gay man's curse what yeah i've been running the spectrum lately i recently went on a date with a couple dates with someone who was 22 uh-huh. and also someone who was 40 so i'm just all over that's great but you know what's the you i'm know international what's, you know when it fucks you up when it really scrambles your brain is when you go on a date with like someone who's in their thirties who is less emotionally mature than yep. you are. Yeah. And that what, happens a lot. Well, you're very emotionally mature. Well, no, but I emotionally you are sixty eight. I went on a date with this guy, like in his thirties, who would not stop talking about his ex. And I was like, mm. You are too old to be doing this. You sh- you must understand that this is a big, big no, 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 no. Anyway. Um I guess that is something same that same night that I got dumped. What? Same night wait, oh really? That's the same night? Yeah. That Wait, was you the, that was... got dumped and then you went on a date on a different. On what a baller! We were, okay, so we were shot there and we were da- uh, shot caller. Shot, shot caller. He's a shot caller. Um, <laughs> we were there and, we, and Bowen came back from a telephone call mm-hmm. where a relationship or a budding uh, situation was was nipped in the bud. Yes, and he was debating whether or not to go out on a date that very night. And I said, at first, I was like, well, are you thinking that you're going to represent yourself and have a good time? Are you going to have a good date tonight? And it was like, no. But then I also thought to myself, yeah, but then you're also canceling on someone an hour before, two hours mm, before, sure. which I think at that point, you do have to think about their feelings. Totally. And we had another friend last night. I just won't say their name. Yes. Um, But they were extremely nervous and anxious yes. to go on a date. Very anxious. And I was literally just like, you gotta go because it's so shitty to cancel right before. That would really yeah bother me. Yeah, that would shatter me. R- shatter. That would shatter mm. me to be canceled. It would emotionally shatter to me. To be canceled. <laughs> to be canceled. Um. On. Okay. Speaking of shallow, I know that's not what we said. <laughs> wow, you're ready to move on, aren't you? You really you want to get there? You do this, honey. No, I want to keep this at. We're we're 25 you in. You feel this way. I feel this way. Oh, this is Matt's new catchphrase. You feel this way. Which is you feel this way. Which uh. <laughs> We, we're trying to think, like, maybe, like... Stylized as U, the letter U, capital F-E-E-L, mm-hmm. this, capital T-H-I-S, mm-hmm. way, capital W-A-Y, question mark. Great. So there was no need to... You no, say, yeah. There, was there any specific <laughs> spelling yeah, 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 yeah. You that we like, needed to know? About? You feel this way, all capitals. I feel that the audience is with me. Okay. Um, <laughs> You feel this way? Which yeah. is like, oh, like, oh, that's how you feel? When you get caught off guard by someone's opinion, you say, you feel this way? You feel this way? <laughs> um, everyone start using it. There, it might be on the merch. It might be on the merch. It might be on the merch. Speaking of the merch, buy the merch. <laughs> um, this is our promised uh, Lost Culturista deep dive into. He's refused to have a discussion with me about it until this moment. Yeah. Joel. Joel. Yeah. Into A Star is Born. He's um, tried to bait me. He has tried to bait me. <laughs> he has tried to bait I me. Think, but I think this. we already know what Joel's stance on it is. Well, yeah, no. But we knew uh, even before the movie came out because he said he was going to be a contrarian no matter what. Uh, and that was a joke, no, bitch. No, that was this, a joke. This stupid bitch with his... That was, that a, was joke. a joke. You are a contrarian on take all a things. Joke, take, take a joke. Why don't I take a joke? You liberal yeah. hat. I don't you like liberal this. Hat. I don't like this take a joke <laughs> nonsense. Take when you said that to me in the group text, Matt, have you ever heard of a joke? I was like... I was... I was truly uh, mad. Who said that? I no said, said that to you. That. You I said, said that, that, bitch. I have the receipt. You feel this way. Who said that to you? You feel this way. 
And I, I, I literally was like, Joel, you were going to hate the movie no matter what. And you said, Matt, do you know what a joke is? No I, one wanted oh. to watch, like that movie more than I did. No one wanted to go into that movie and love it. That's absolutely not no fun. one. Not a, single, did. not a single person on this fucking planet wanted to like that movie more than I did. But well, I, think Joel, I think Joel was in a very like understandable place of just being like, there's no way it's going to live up to all this crazy hype. Let's go around the table okay. and talk about our feelings and opinions about A Star is Born, starting okay. with our esteemed guess no i think you guys should go first okay you go first um went in with very high expectations that i deep down there was a kernel of "Mm, no way no way is it gonna live up to this Mm -hmm. went in uh i had just come from a weird day at work and i was like we're getting all the details we're just really we're we're starting at the fucking beginning absolutely we want we want want texture we want texture born the first movie i ever saw was (laughs) it's rule number eight we want we want texture so uh number eight we go to this theater times square 10 30 (laughs) thursday um (laughs) it's all of our friends a lot a lot of fun pals a lot of randos and i will just say so the energy was very frenetic. It was just a lot happening, a lot of activity. And, you know, I'm just getting really hyped up. And then we watched the movie. The first 45 minutes are perfect. Perfectly paced, perfectly performed, wonderful direction, decent writing. And then it just and then it just sags in the second half. And then I feel like a lot of things towards the end were unearned. Uh, and I don't know what the... We, we don't know... Uh, what the point of view of the movie is if it's supposed to be told through Jackson. And then at the end, I feel like we're not, no one's on the same page about what the takeaway is. And the thing that ruined the experience for me was the fucking person behind me who shushed me <laughs> during. Was, the, it a, was during, it a white guy? No, it was, it was a white, um, w- uh, f- like woman presenting person. And like, I was like, and she shushed me mm. and, du- but not, not only, but she shushed me during the alley billboard shot. Well, that's everyone laughed. Unconscionable. Unconscionable. That's ridiculous. We just, I just couldn't stop laughing. Aaron Jackson was next to me. We were both lost it. We were like giggling like schoolgirls. And then this fucking idiot goes, shh. And I gave the dirtiest look I've ever given in to our someone. space. God. In our, our space. space. Say, in our space during our movie. I don't the think opening so, night honey. Of our movie. I don't think so, honey. Shh. Shh. Like, stop it. Ridiculous. I hate that fucking sound. Ridiculous. Just, just <laughs> literally use your words. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway. Are you good? I'm good. That's me. That, that's all I have. Here's my review of the film. And I understand. That was my experience with the film. That wasn't that my review. All the, all the audience members can understand that, yes, I had Shangela on. And it was I was in the afterglow of the film. And also Shangela was there. So I had to be, you know, hyperbolic with my love of the movie. Here is the tea. This is a conflict of interest already. No. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I think that. It's better than most movies. Really, I do. And I do think it will be looked back on as a good movie. However, Gaga, I think she's amazing. Amazing. I think Bradley Cooper was fantastic. I thought the directing, for the most part, was excellent. And I think for his first movie, it's like a huge victory. Uh I thought it looked great. I think most of the music is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Where it loses me, and this is like me as like someone who studied screenwriting, who fucking, I can't stand this shit is she's the only female character in the whole movie, Mm -hmm. and that sucks. There's Gail and there's uh, Halsey. (laughs) There's Gail, Halsey, (laughs) Dave Chappelle's wife. Yes. Nameless. Nameless, and then and one of the little girls. One of the little girls, whatever, and then Gaga. And I just feel like, here's how you fix the movie. Make that ridiculous British cartoon of a manager, a woman, fucking cast Carrie Coon in that part, watch her get nominated oh! for an Oscar. I'm not even kidding. You're speaking my language, bitch. I'm <laughs> telling you, just make it a female character because A, the character has no female influence in her life. Right. Or she's motherless. She has no female friends. She only hangs out with people who perform as women. She's the kind of chick who punches dudes at bars, cops at bars. Right. And Made then no you're going to tell me that this fucking literal cartoon of a British manager is going to come in and say, hey, change everything about you that's working musically, which was working. She's becoming like a Sarah Bareilles figure and then she turns into fucking Katy Perry Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Change her whole look, Mm -hmm. which no one's ever brought up a problem with her look. Her hair looked great when it was brown. And also, I hate your husband and I'm going to pit you against him. It's like, why the fuck do we accept this character so wholeheartedly in her life? I understand he's a powerful person in the music industry, but I think the movie could have helped itself by deepening that 
or, or like exploring that thing there where there's no female influence in her life. Or but it's but, but what you're saying is it's ridiculous that the uh, most influential agent of change in that movie is that fucking manager. Right, because it's totally unearned. It's, it's crazy. It, it comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and I think that kind of crazy scene where he sits with him at, with Jackson at the house and says, you know that it's a matter of time until you drink again. And also, you're gonna be, you're a danger to her and all these things. It's like, if this is a female character, at least we can understand this is coming from a place of like real knowledge about maybe what she's going through or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's this ridiculous character and I think that was weird. The fact that they made her into this pop star was weird because we see all the time uh, singers like Sarah Bareilles, singers like, you know, like any sort of like adult, adult contemporary mm-hmm, skewing mm-hmm, artist. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that's what she could have been. Right, also, right, like if you're right. going to set the mu- set the movie in country music, there's tons of pop country artists like Maren Morris, for example, that yes. are successful doing what she's doing. Make her into that kind of artist. This felt cartoonish to me. Oh and my God. also... My last thing with it is, yes, I understand we have a template to follow with the other Star is Born, but that this movie does glamorize suicide. It does. And it, it, it says, like, but the template- he died and now she can fully be the star that she's always been. And it was actually better for her that he passed away in a way. That is what that, that, what's that happening. Her, her true artistry only came out after he killed himself. Right. But... And also, like, I just want to say, there's no way he writes that song. No. It's not in his musical language. No. And... I felt that movie trying to be other iconic movies where a pop star sings at the end a little bit. But I thought Gaga was fantastic. I think it's a melodrama, and therefore I'm willing to let a lot of these things go. I cried three times watching the film, and I really enjoyed it and did see it three more times after I saw it the first time. I I loved the movie. Mm -hmm. I I think that it will be nominated for a lot of Oscars. I think it will win a few Oscars. Mm -hmm. Not convinced on Gaga. Pretty convinced Bradley Cooper will win Best Actor. What? Yeah. I think they're not going to be able to help It's not themselves. a crowded field. It's not a crowded Dang, field. It's actually really right. light. Unless they... Sam Sam feels like a lock. Sam Elliott? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Right? I liked his performance very much. That was one of the times mm. I cried. I thought Bradley Cooper was excellent. I think the acting in the movie is fantastic. Fantastic. And I, I think that she was great. Wow. Um, I hope gay icon, gay ally Andrew Dice Clay gets nominated too. <laughs> LOL at him sharing scenes with fucking Lady Gaga. This fucking man if it's good enough for it. her, it's not good enough for you. No. Hmm? Oh, Bowen, you need to brush your teeth. Yes, you do. I wasn't saying that to you. I was just saying like you, as in like the 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 universal you, the royal you. Yes. You have beautiful, gorgeous teeth. Thank you. And I think that's because you use Quip. Mm, it is. You know, brushing your teeth is one of the most important parts of your day. And Quip, they know that they've combined dentistry and design to make a better electric toothbrush. Quip is the new electric toothbrush that packs just the right amount of vibrations into a slimmer design at a fraction of the cost of bulkier traditional electric toothbrushes. And guiding pulses alert you when to switch sides, making brushing the right amount of effortless. Quip also comes with a mount that suctions right to your mirror and unsticks to use as a cover for hygienic travel anywhere, whether it's going in your gym bag or carry-on. And because the thing that cleans your mouth should also be clean, for God's sakes, Quip's subscription plan refreshes your brush on a dentist-recommended schedule, delivering new brush heads every three months for just $5, including free shipping worldwide, everywhere in the world. Everywhere by Fleetwood Mac. Quip is backed by a network of over 10,000 dental professionals, including dentists, hygienists, and dental students. Most toothbrushes don't get named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of the year, but Quip sure did. Find out for yourself why. So, here's what you're going to do. Quip starts at just $25, and if you go to getquip.com slash dingdong right now, you'll get your first refill pack free with the Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com forward slash dingdong D I N G D O N G. Here's the full spelling, honey. G E T Q U I P dot com, C O M slash D I N G D O N G. And remember, that ships everywhere by Michelle Branch. Just thought that your Fleetwood Mac reference was Michelle Branch Erasure. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to Don't erase Michelle erase Branch. Her, okay. Absolutely. And also, everyone should be listening to The Wreckers, which is Michelle Branch's other group, the other project. Mm hmm. Um, anyway, uh, I was gonna say... And why did you do that to me as a bop? Why did you do that to me? Okay, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a Diane Warren. Add that to the list of Diane Warren classics. I said, here's her triumvirate. Because you love me, I don't, don't want to miss a thing. thing. And why did why you do, did that, you to do that to me? I can't stop talking about what you do to me. 
And also, I will say Shallow is a great Shallow's moment great in movies. Yes, yes, yes. Now, Jolie. Now, Joel. Oh, he's... Am I allowed to speak? Yes. Am I allowed to say what I want to say? Listen, I haven't been able to express these opinions. Here's the thing. Here's what I'll say. I will. I agree with Bowen. I think the first 45 minutes is incredible. I think it's so textured. I mm-hmm. love the scene in the gay bar when they're in the, the parking lot. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. I think one moment, it's like screenwriting 101. It made me so fucking hard was those fucking cheese puffs in the back. Do you like cheese I puffs? No. That. And then we just see the driver eating it in the background. Yeah. Love it. Chef's kiss, great. Mm. So much, so smart about Singing it. Shallows together, a great movie moment. Yeah, Love. Yeah. I think the performances are fine. Um, I think it is one of the worst scripts I have <laughs> ever sat through I don't in a long time. It, of this prestige level movie, there is a line when Lady Gaga literally sits across from Bradley Cooper and says the phrase, I normally write my songs on a typewriter. <laughs> and n- it goes unaddressed. It goes unaddressed. I do not understand. Because I, Gaga I, does. I almost like, li- I, I wanted to set myself aflame when I heard her say that. And I was like, and there was no like POV is like oh if it if they made it like if Bradley if they just like shot a, a shot of Bradley Cooper like looking horrified I would have been satisfied <laughs> it would have been it's great it's true though you or really like don't rolling know. his eyes <laughs> And the, and then and then the other thing is is that the timeline is insane. Yes. And I Bradley Cooper has said in interviews that he specifically did not want to have a montage or anything that like uh, an alley getting famous montage. But there are so many scenes where you literally I was like, oh, this is being shot, and the people are reacting and speaking as though this is four months later. And then you find that it's like two days later. And then it's like, <laughs> what exactly is the timeline of her rise? And even more confusing, his fall makes no sense. How do you go from selling out a stadium to then shoot it, doing a pharmacy? Pharmaceutical like conference, it did, and then he goes back to being a performer at the Grammys. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And then when he disappears, and then she shows up and finds him, has she been searching for him for a night, a week? How many days Wait, has so he been missing? The part where he when he wakes part. up, oh, when yeah, he wakes yeah, up yeah, in yeah, Dave yeah. Chappelle's room, right, right, right. Um, terrible. I think one of the greatest mistakes that this movie made is that it sets up a, com- a very compelling. Conflict for Bradley Cooper that none of the other movies touched on, which is the hearing loss. Tonight, it's great. Yeah. Yes. it's great. It's a great thing. Uh, it's a great thing to layer in, and then they completely drop it, mm-hmm. and then he That's ends up killing well. himself because the manager was mean to him. It makes no well, sense. Well, I bought that he was very sick. I bought him committing suicide because I bought him as very mentally ill. I just don't like the way that, that the, it was handled, that the especially was the Sam manager. Elliott saying, you know, this wasn't your fault. It was his fault. That message is really problematic. Yeah. yeah. I also think there are so many weird emotional jumps that happen in the movie. I yeah. don't think the punch makes sense. I do the not punch think makes no sense. The punch is comes from nowhere. It is not does not seem motivated by any human emotion that we have she ever witnessed. Seem drunk, she doesn't seem drunk enough. She to doesn't do seem it. drunk. Yeah. He didn't, and th- the guy didn't seem aggressive no, enough exactly. either. It, it, we're supposed to buy, I guess, that. That she is just triggered by the uh, the idea of someone taking a picture with him. It makes no sense. Um, you for also you left out a female character. Um, Gail. No, the, 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 the cashier. cashier. The yeah. cashier. Uh, AKA, AKA his wife from Borat. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, that's that what? actress. Yeah. She's a sta- she's a comedian. I'm sorry. I had to. Yeah, she Iconic. slays. She and slays. Gaga was great in that scene. Listen, if Tony it's Collette, really if really Tony really Collette right. can win a Boston Critics Association <laughs> award for her turn in the hours. <laughs> For like wow. fifteen minutes of stage time, then I believe that that woman can can win a box. Some breakthrough <laughs> award. You really have just got that is such that is the most LA gay thing you've said <laughs> <laughs> since you moved. Is for for him for Joel to know that Tony Collette won a fucking Boston Boston Critics Association Boston award. Film uh, Association award for her work in the hours. hours. <laughs> I think Dave Chappelle's scene is awful. I think. really, bro. Really, Why bro. Why do you think that, bro? And you can tell. Here's here's a little thing that I noticed what is their history? as well. Is that the thing is is the bros are so clearly written, but in yeah. Chappelle's actual like vocal di- like pattern, he says man because there is a line where he literally says man and bro in the same sentence, <laughs> and it's so distracting because it's clear that he these, these, those bros are not natural for him, mm-hmm. but the mans are. Oh, yeah. So it's so, it was so distracting, oh, and that wow. song, that last song, could be a song in any movie. It feels like a different. It's from a different movie. It I, I, when I knew Diane Warren, 
and, and, and also we haven't talked about this yet the entire movie and i know that like there's some argument about like what the pov of the movie is but it i'm sorry it it, it does feel very clearly like it has an anti-pop agenda that is like weird yes. and insidious in a way that i don't understand and also i i do think that uh, why did you do that to me while i did hear it hearing it in the gay bar in the gay club you it live. is a it's a great it's experience great. and yeah. I, I do love <laughs> to jam to it. It is very fun. But that performance on SNL is Jenna Maroney on 30 Rock. It is such a parody <laughs> of is. what I agree. A, a good pop performance is. And you're I, supposed to laugh at it. It's muffin yeah. top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is, it is muffin top adjacent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that made me mad because it's like what well, and like I took out the dancers because I'm an artist. And it's like fu- oh f- uh, also you don't do that because those dancers like, are, are gonna be like, no, we actually have to work. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is there's a union, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> I feel. Like, yeah. Also, I, I mean, look, I think it's a, I think it's a problem with the fact that they made her into that kind of artist. She right. did it, it. There was nothing about what she was doing and why he even liked her, the manager to begin with. Totally, totally. That said, yeah. let's turn this person into. Lady Gaga because we didn't even know she could execute it choreo. Taylor, it took Taylor Swift four albums before she went that hard. Full pop. pop. And here's the thing. I actually think it very much mirrors what literally happened with Katy Perry. Because Katy Perry was a warped tour artist. She was a musician Singer, first. Songwriter. And then she became Ish, the yeah. sort of you know cartoon that she is now. Yeah. But I, I agree with you about the timeline. I would buy that happening because it literally happened to Katy Perry, and we see it like happen over time with many artists who have to who feel like they have to sexualize themselves or do that. But because the timeline was unclear, it felt jarring, and there was really no moment where it was like you're actually really capable as a pop star like this. And another thing that bothered me is when she was telling Bradley Cooper about her meeting with the guy and she was like, he really likes that song from the diner. It's like, when did he hear that song? Yeah, I, that made no sense. And here's the, no here's the other she biggest him a demo. Here's the other biggest problem with the second half of the We're movie the is that it, it loses track of Lady Gaga completely. I do not understand yes. what Ali wants in that second half of the yes. movie. I do not understand what her, like is her conflicts other than Bradley Cooper's alcoholism. Right. And it, it just like I don't. It, it's like her journey stops as soon as the she, star is born. Yeah. You know, yes. and then like and and then it turns into a full his vehicle, and it doesn't. I don't know, because like we're so locked into her, the wish fulfillment of her mm-hmm, journey in the first mm-hmm. half of the movie, and that is compelling to me in a way that like because this th- this movie is a can- melodrama in general. It's like redoing a myth, like mm-hmm, it, where mm-hmm, I did mm-hmm. not go into this. Once I realized that this movie is a melodrama and judging it on that, grading it on that curve, it's like fine. It doesn't need to reinvent the wheel. It does not need to surprise me with its storytelling. But there is an intri- that you can do a, a well trod story well, mm-hmm, and I think yeah. the first half of the movie does that. Mm-hmm. I think the first half of the movie reinvents that myth Absolutely, in a way yeah. that's really compelling and interesting to watch. And I think the second half of the movie does nothing but pile cliche on top of cliche on top of cliche. It's because and we it know leaves exactly its well-established it's world. It completely leaves a well-established world. And where do they live? Where do Allie and her father live? That is the it's, mystery it's a, for It'll the be ages. a question forever. And the, the other... Suburbs outside of LA. <laughs> yeah, and they all have yeah. Jersey accents. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, and here's... Uh, <laughs> listen, I, I could go on. I actually think Anthony uh, Andrew Dice Clay is better than Sam. He's really... I was Andrew Dice Clay is great in the movie. I thought that too. I was like, oh, I Andrew think Dice he's better. He's really good. I think movie. Sam... Uh, uh, Elliot. Elliot has the some real like hard scenes to pull off. The the scene where the where he comes in. Stealing my voice in, thing is that, really that was yeah, such that a was switch. A bad. That was such a switch. As soon as they got into what we called in theater school the kisser hit range, um, <laughs> and started speaking about three centimeters away from each other's faces, like it was a switch that like again did not feel motivated, and like you could tell like. Sam Elliott was, as an actor was like oh, I guess I have to fill in the blanks here and get there myself self motivated right. to get there but there's nothing in the script that like I did not understand the switch from like, like anger to like true tears totally. um, I did, it was like, abrupt when, him backing out of the, the driveway was great I think Andrew Dice Clay if he had one more scene would have a better chance of being nominated yeah, for, no. for best supporting than Sam Neill yes. well that, that last scene where he's like um, saying you know the 12 notes thing Mm. That was a, supposed to be a scene between Andrew Dice Clay and Lady Gaga, and Bradley Cooper at the last second called Sam Elliott and said it had to be him because he wanted that connection between. And here's what I'll say about Bradley Cooper's performance. 
And I'm torn. It's so funny because marble mouth southern touche. I have I have I've changed my position depending on who I've spoken to a number of times because there is like a literal whisper network of gay men in LA who like do not like this movie and are too afraid to speak out about it. I know that I'm I'm about to shed about a thousand followers on Twitter because of my my views. You know, Um, (laughs) I think everyone is. I think everyone knows this movie isn't perfect. No, I've seen people. uh, There are people going so hard. I I saw someone who very lightly was like, you know, the movie sort of goes downhill after. They uh, sing the shallows together, and a critic jumped in the thread and was like, "That's the point. The point is that you know, their the rest of their relationship is chasing after the uh, high that they found when they were singing." And it was like, "Listen, out there. listen, I I understand that that could be an interesting avenue to take for this movie, but you can also make it interesting to watch as well. It doesn't have to like the audience doesn't have to feel the malaise of, totally. of what the characters are feeling for that to work." And the other and the last thing I'll say is there are so much cake on faces. So much frosting on faces. And does acne not exist in this world? <laughs> does that, that like, is everyone just getting chemical peels every single fucking day because oh my god, I couldn't I couldn't watch I it. I love the, the first cake on face. Yeah. The cream cheese like when she announces that she like is signed or when she says the manager thing and he's obviously drunk and he takes the cake mm-hmm. and puts it in her face. I thought that was like a really good example of their I think really good chemistry. But then give them that. But then the next one was where it was like you you were nervous as the audience as as the audience just being like, wait a minute. And I, that was a moment for me where I was like, maybe I was just not responding in the right way. But I was like, oh, I don't think this movie knows is pulling off what it's I trying think to it was off. supposed to be con- supposed to be a little bit shady. well I, I, and, that, I think that is the microcosm of the whole movie like that is the movie where it's small. It's like oh, does this movie know what it's trying to do? After always remember us this way. The the the, bread, the manager comes in. It it's gets it's interesting because I do feel like a people either every single person almost that I've spoken to who's left that movie has been like Lady Gaga is great, but I actually think Bradley Cooper is is overrated. Or actually don't didn't really like Gaga, and I think Bradley Cooper is a revelation. And I have Whoa. spoken to many people on both sides, and every time I've been like, yes, I agree. <laughs> um, you could win an Oscar for that scene alone where I, he apologizes. I do. To her. The thing is, is I just I ultimately don't think that you you will. I walked away from this movie thinking, feeling any strong feelings differently about them. I love them both. Yes. And but I guess with for me with Bradley Cooper is I did not find it a transformative enough ex, uh, of a performance to not be distracted by the fact that I was watching Bradley Cooper do this character. Right. Okay. I I I disagree with that. And I think well, and I think it's a it's it is sort of like that is that is a me issue because mm-hmm. I was not able to like turn off that part of my brain and I think like yeah you need to watch more Bradley Cooper movies yeah Yeah. (laughs) that is that's the cure that's (laughs) That's the the, that's the remedy the cure by Lady Gaga um I will say can I say something um it's very funny because Matt was over at my apartment before we were very late to this recording and Matt was just (laughs) looking up gags for a game show his show with Dave and he was playing clips of Titanic of Rose uh of of, the corset scene the corset scene and just we're, we were just quoting that dialogue back and forth because it's just in our bones, and it, we were just laughing at how stupid the writing is. And it's I'm realizing, situation, Rose, you know the money's gone. gone. Of course, I, I know, know it's, it's gone. gone. You, you remind me every, every day. day. It's like terrible writing. We're women. <laughs> our choices are never easy. easy. Okay, and I think you'd have to see me working as a seamstress. <laughs> Why are you being so selfish? I'm, I'm selfish. Pissed. I'm selfish. It's truly so silly. The script is so bad. I think this and wh- whoever that critic was that you quoted as saying like it feels like Titanic. It's like the buzz is. It's like Sasha Stone is being here's, so extra. Okay, it's he, Sasha. But I feel like it's 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 it. It does feel in some way comparable to, to Titanic, where this cultural conversation is maddening and we're talking around, around in circles. It's La La Land again. It's La La Land again. And I will again. say this: it's the same complaints I had with La La Land, where the script is horrid, <laughs> and there is a first half of the movie that is brilliant, uh-huh. and then you get that fucking. Stupid, I'm sorry, La La Land has one of the worst scenes we've seen in modern cinema history is the argument between them oh, when the they decide to dinner? like break up yeah, when yeah, they yeah. when they, when he's the made her dinner or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And dinner, sorry. the mo- the literally it's literally they have an argument because the movie needs them to break up. Yeah. It's not earned, yeah. it's not motivated. They're great, but they can't even convince I, us. I do bad. I agree that that scene is bad, but I also find it laughable some of the people who s- Stand so hard for a Star Is Born, who went so hard in on La La Land, and I 
do not think that the quality wise these movies have a gulf between them are that I really uh, like I and uh, the thing is is I I liked La La Land La La Land La La, 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 La Land. Land I liked La La Land fine <laughs> I I think there's better acting in La La Land than there is in this I think Emma Stone deserved the I Oscar think, I can't remember who else was uh up for it that year I can't imagine she did because <laughs> <laughs> but but I do love her and I think she was great. Uh, but and I think she's probably better than Gaga is in this movie. But and the music is better in the Stars Born. That I would give definitely yeah, like uh, Pasig and Paul. Uh, I could say some things, but oh, I just think they're they're bad musical theater writers. I think they they are oh, good individual Joel songwriters. Joel no, is, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Joel and it is Lee. it is the most emblematic in the greatest showman is that because they these boys came up in in the song cycle generation of mm-hmm, musical theater mm-hmm. writers they are good at writing an individual song yes like Waving through a window is one of the so all gorgeous. time yeah. most gorgeous like musical theaters uh, for songs forever, for that I boy, love. and for forever is great as well. Gorgeous. But like some, a lot of these so- like especially in the Greatest Showman, this is me. I love it. You know, I yes, love, love this is me. the Greatest Showman. You feel Showman like soundtrack. it is you when you listen to yes. it. Yes, <laughs> but the problem is, is none of those songs move the plot forward in a classically like musical theater way. It's in it's this is me. Songs. Who is she singing to? Who is the who is the the who is she singing to? What does she want? The world, the at critics. The end, at the end of the song, does she win? Does she lose? Like she these wins. Are, these think... as a dramatic writer are questions you should be asking yourself about the songs in your musical. The only song that does that in a, in a uh, Greatest Showman is, I think, Million Dreams, like the very first song. And but there is a I, montage attack. The there, first three it. songs in Greatest Showman are fucking. You could watch paint dry and it will be more exciting. I the love go- a million dreams. There are three bops in a row. It's rewrite the stars, bop city bitch. This is me. This is me, bop de bop. Uh huh. And then Michelle Williams and her ass walking a tightrope, mama. Ooh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Rewrite the stars is very good. Um, I also I do love and you never know enough. I love never enough. Never enough. enough is shout out to my friend Dan Slater who remixed Never Enough. It is the ED. It is the definitive EDM remix of Never Enough that was the backdrop for, for a the fight. In Spice? Yes. Wait, wow, that's culture. Yeah, that culture. Oh, wait, but also you know that the actress that played that part is lip-synced. the only person in the Rebecca movie that lip synced. Rebecca yeah. Ferguson couldn't couldn't Lo- slay Lauren respect. Allred voice. Season yes. four or five. A voice yeah. contestant. Yes. That, 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 that was is, a fucking... That, that, that is about gag. as best as you can hope for it oh, as a contestant yeah. on The Voice. As if I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncredited, <laughs> like, <laughs> voice. appearance and this is... Oh, God. The but greatest but she, Lauren Allred is literally touring right now with symphonies where she walks out, sings that song, and then leaves. And she gets really? fucking... And she gets I'm sure she's getting paid five figures. Uh, a million... I'm trying a million. to hold my Bye. breath. You have not lived until you are fucking like on the come up of Molly as that fucking song <laughs> comes on in you're a right, fucking circuit party at 5 a.m. and you're screaming That's because it is it is never such enough, a never enough never ooh, 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 ooh. never enough oh, it's so good for it's me, so good but again for me. What? What? Ooh. How does it move the story forward in any it's, significant that way? That song that does, I think, it, because it's the <laughs> moment when he falls in love with her, and Michelle is like, "I'm losing him." Also, um, the That's song cinematic. That, the the duet between Hugh and Zach is pretty good too. Oh, I just, that I, is good. I um, miss they, that they, singing and dancing. Good, not a good song, but in terms of like moving the, the, plot, moving the plot forward. But even the song at the end when like he decides to like go and reopen it is like a stirring song where it's like, "Do do we're all?" And, and it's like. It, it it starts at zero and then there's a song and then the story is starts again in a, a completely same place. Dramatic. Zach is so good. Weird. I miss him no, singing and, you can, and dancing. Zach you can tell he good. misses it. You yeah. can tell he you misses it. You can see it the light in, the in his eyes yeah. that yes. isn't there during fucking Dirty Grandpa. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's so much hotter when he's doing musical. Theater. He really is. Yeah. He's yeah. good at it. He is good at it. But but when he's doing these broad fratty comedies, I'm like, I'm sorry, but you seem like everyone else right now, you and know you have he... talents that are not. Like what what musical this. would we cast Zach in? Zach in? Oh, like Bach and Wicked. No, he no. could. He would be a good Fierro. Fierro. Oh, I, no, no, so not Bach. Yes, Fierro. That's what I meant. Sorry, I sorry, like, sorry. Wow, Bach. Oh my God, sorry, not Bach. I Bach would be, is I Adam. Would, Adam I would be a great Bach. <laughs> you would be a good. Bach. I'd be a good Bach. I always dream that. This is the sad thing about being a little gay. Uh, person of color Nessa Rose. Up, is that like the roles that you dream of Are we, we we couldn't have thought better for ourselves oh, we no. were like god i hope i get to be bach someday ah! cuz that's what yeah. i thought that's what i thought was available to oh, me my god. at the time it's true i mean he's so good in hairspray too so he's good in so hairspray good in hairspray 
He's he's a really talented. talented. I mean, and also he plays those kinds of parts well. And it's just like, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, he, he. I think he's too roided out now. He's yeah, too big. He looks it's fucked up. That's this is the fucked up thing about L.A. that I've really and this has actually helped my body dysmorphia a lot. Uh-huh. Moving to L.A. wildly, moving to L.A. has helped, helped. my body image issues Beautiful. because I am now so privy to how prevalent steroid usage is yes. in especially in our community and like everybody that I thought was attainable like just through hard work and diet alone is not uh, wow. and it's just like uh-huh. and now I've I've become a real expert in spotting and being like and just being okay with like the progress that I'm making because and the thing is is I have nothing morally against steroids sure. I if I had the back knee real estate to give up uh, <laughs> to do if it. If you wanted the knob nipples, yeah. you would do if it. If I, if uh, listen, I love my genitals, but I truly do not have a centimeter to give up with my balls. You know, like, <laughs> I, like there, it's just like I'm walking a fine line as it is, and I just need all of the space down there uh-huh. that I can get, and I, so I cannot do the steroids. But the uh, it it. Like it's my thing is is like all these Instagram models who are like you can get here too mm-hmm. if you just like follow my program and sp- give me forty dollars and I'll give it to you. It's so dishonest. Actually, speaking of Venom, Tom Hardy, bisexual icon, yes. is one of the only people who's done one of those movies in recent history. When he was Bane in The Dark Knight, mm-hmm. there's like press junket interviews with him where they're like, "How did you gain all this weight for the role? Did you eat a lot of fish?" And he's like, "No steroids." Yeah, like, it's just like yeah, great. He was like, I, I don't. He, I think he was a little bit cheekier about than that, but like he's like one of the only people who like fully Said admitted it. to being like because it's like all the Chris's there's no way they all got there themselves sure, I'm sure. sorry Hemsworth's it's just not- body is freakish Chris Hemsworth's body is it's like carved out of stone Evans too it's like it's too Evans much. yeah and yeah Pine is pretty natural that looks just like he goes to the gym you know whose body I always see on Instagram and I'm like I would kill to have this body which I probably I probably would have to sell my soul to the devil is Colton Haynes Mm. Oh, okay. He looks like he doesn't eat though. <laughs> Colton. Colton Haynes. No, he has to eat a shit ton. He's huge. He's so skinny. That's and what do you mean? Like he's so his like waist his body is so fat, small. His body fat percentage is very low, which means he probably does use steroids because it, it, it's really difficult to be that large without having. Uh, I'm sure his body fat is like at six or seven percent, yeah, and he's large and lean. And that is Colton Haynes. Yes, yeah. he's he's huge. large. Yeah. Have you ever seen him in IRL? No, I've never seen him in person. He's a big boy. He's been, he was at oh. the Marin Morris the Marin Morris. He's a big we boy. And he's, uh, oh my god! You know what? Lean. I didn't. I didn't think of him as being big. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, did you see um Rough Night, where he plays the stripper? Yeah. yeah oh, like I didn't. He, see, oh, I, I yeah, I don't remember it. Well, he, I I don't know. On screen, I'm always just like, I never really understand like what depth perception I guess. Sure. By the way, Rough Night. Just, uh, I think of, I saw it on a plane. On a plane that might like be like influencing like my review of it, but I think it's like truly the funniest fucking movie. And do so you smart. feel? Do you feel like movies are better on planes? I do. Oh, always. Okay, <laughs> always. Guy who dumped me like had this whole thing where he was like, "You have to drink a glass of white wine before you get on this plane and watch Greatest Showman because you will fucking lose it." And yeah. Cry. yeah. And I, and I, and well, it the altitude really does fuck you up in a big way too because I have sobbed so many times on planes watching movies where I'm like, why am I crying watching this movie uh-huh, again? Uh-huh. Um, but the and intern. I, it is the, the intern. <laughs> intern. No, wait, not, not, is it the internship or the intern? The Anne Hathaway Robert. And, yeah, yeah, it's the, the intern. intern. Yeah. Wept. I love that movie. Wept actually. 30,000 feet. That's in a good air. Nancy Myers. Play. It's, it's I will say I sobbed watching the live action beauty and the beast recently on the plane. <laughs> and here's another hot take live action beauty and the beast. Oh, don't do this. It's better than the. Cooking. You have said you're this, an and you're idiot. a fucking. Said you are such an idiot. No. Wow, well, everything stupid. you said no, in this listen, episode is thrown I, out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not better. It's not better. I will say, <laughs> if I were to, wa- if I were watching the cartoon, you couldn't even take yourself so seriously watching, when you said I know, it. I know. You, you if bailed. I were, if I were watching the cartoon, <laughs> if I were watching the cartoon, I would say I have some notes, and then if I watched the live action, I would be like, okay, they took some of my notes because here's the thing. Uh, here's uh, the we thing. need. We need to recast the dishwasher who's playing yeah. Bell. Here's the thing. Here's the thing what that the live notes? action f- solves story wise for me is that a I do like that they made Belle the inventor in the live action. Oh, sure. a bit more agency. Right. I yes. think it's a, it's a better play. Sure. I think two they solve a huge problem with the cartoon, which is why does no one remember this castle exists until all of the events of this because movie? Because they're casting and a then, spell. Yes, but they only they, they, that's only from the live action. The whole town forgets, and then they add this 
actually truly dark layer is that all the servants who are now fucking items in the in the castle have families, have families. in the town that have forgotten all about them sure. and that they're reunited. And then the other thing is there's this urgency in the live action because there's a, not only will they stay clocks and dusters and stuff like that, but they lose, they lose their, their souls, their agency. They lose like their humanity, basically. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. they're slowly turning more and more into inanimate objects, which is, that is horrific. Cool. And then also, Audra, <laughs> Audra McDonald and the piano are married in the live action. And there is a very sad sort of undercurrent of this subplot where they haven't seen each other in years because she's a fucking chest of drawers up in her room yeah. and he's the fucking grand piano. And so they're trapped and they can't see each other. Wow, I'm Joel's making of you. It's really case. sad. No, and it's dark, it's, and it's dark. As a screenwriter, you must appreciate these. Things. I appreciate these changes, but the fact of the matter is, they add songs which slow the movie down. Yeah, do they do? How weird. can they a do, moment last forever? They also add that weird oh, hard, hard, plague hard, hard, subplot, hard, hard, hard. which doesn't oh, exactly oh, oh. work. It, it doesn't <laughs> add anything. And also, Emma Watson does sound. Like Emma a, Watson sounds like a dishwasher. She singing. sounds like a Casio keyboard. Yes, <laughs> like, she <laughs> sounds like <laughs> sounds like you're doing scales on a Casio. Yeah, she's yes. like oh, 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 oh. she's. But her acting is good. I don't know. I actually, I and this might be just like something. shout out to Sudi Green who once texted me. Emma Stone is amazing. I love her. She is Hermione and carries that legacy. And I said Emma Watson, babe. And she goes fuck. But it was too late and it had already been posted to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> That's something no one knows about Sudi. Is she commonly, commonly Confuses messes backwards. up celebrities' names? Wow. She once That's called. Christine Baranski, Christy Brinkley, <laughs> which was one of my favorites. She is oh. the child of immigrants. Stop. OG who face Christine Baranski. OG who Chris face. Colfer was Chris Kaufner. Yes. That's, I mean, that's fair though. <laughs> that's so fair. He's a secret hottie too. Would bang. Is he? Would bang. Okay. Um, is he? I feel like, has he, was he, was he doing stuff? He's not really doing anything now. He actually wrote a movie. Oh, he cool. wrote a movie. Yeah. Good for him. Good but for I him. don't know if it was well received, but I remember towards the end of Glee, like I would check back in with Glee because in the beginning he was like, you know, dorky looking Chris Colfer. And then at the end they like did his hair. He got a little mm. body on him. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that's that new game. He money. has such a baby face. New game money. Tough. New you game know, mo- Kevin McCann. New, new game, game money. New game money. Game <laughs> money. <laughs> what um, were you about to say, Jolie? Uh, it's not important. No, you guys have. You're having fun. It's cool. What? It's What's, cool. You know, it's cool. Joel, you feel this way? You're having you fun. What's going on? Tell us. I still don't understand how to use that catchphrase. <laughs> like, okay, so, so so let's say I'll I'll be like, um, Jennifer Hudson does not have a good voice. You feel this way? Yes, feel exactly. Way? <laughs> that's it. That's it. Like, that's imagine like, saying those words. I know, I know, but that's just like an extreme, we should very shout extreme out, example. We should shout out at this point the group text that me, Joel, and Nicole Silverberger are on, which has no name, but it's basically a The Voice it is, mm. group. It is the three people in our lives that talk about The Voice <laughs> and watch The Voice regularly. Uh, it's very difficult. It's a great season right now. It's, it's great. Good. It's good. It's good. Tune I think in. the judges are, are good. Yeah. It's I a mean, good combo. The, the, the show is not about the contestants. The show will never create a star. Never. See, so then it it, it, it betrays its mission. It does. It does not. It does not. Because I don't think the mission was ever to be like American Idol, we're going to create a superstar. I think the mission from the beginning was this is a show where four judges compete. No, I, I really do think it started out because the thing is, is look at the careers of the people that uh, the four that started. They were not A-listers at the time. They The voice was not getting A-listers from the start. They're only getting A-listers now. You wouldn't consider at the time. I th- first of all, I think Christina was not. An Maroon Five at the time. was a huge band. It was a huge band, but he. But the thing is, is you. We are. Christina you're Aguilera looking was back a huge now. deal. I not, don't think not so. in terms of current record what sales, but in terms of being a celebrity. Yeah, yes, but Christina she. Aguilera but was, it w- she was a has been celebrity at that point. I, mean, I don't think people were ready to say that. What was her hit? Let there be love. Hear him, hear him. This is the first time I'm hearing this song. First time I'm hearing. <laughs> well, this that's song. you need to seek treatment. Not that we, that, that's a great song. And then, but CeeLo at the time was like CeeLo big. was big before he was like doing whatever he was doing, selling meth to kids or whatever the fuck he got caught doing. Blake <laughs> Shelton was a huge country artist. There you go. So, but I think I think the this Kelly, is the prob- Jennifer, Blake, and Adam. Now it's a different. Thing. This is the problem: is that the show doesn't know what, what its mission is. I think that's my theory. Even I, though I, do, I don't watch the show, I it don't is care a place to it. come on and rehab your career if you're a pop star. That's mm. the thing. I mean, that's what Gwen Stefani did. It's a place to launch your next project. 
as wow. a, as a coach. Do you hear that? The sounds of people honking out yeah. there is, every, is, 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 are all, is is like Christina Aguilera and her fans. I can. Wow. I it's will Christina say, Aguilera and her fourteen fans out there. Like, how dare you? <laughs> I'm an A lister. Oh, she's it's Christina's fine. out there. I mean, yeah. she's fine. I just, I, I don't know. I do love. I love uh, the other iterations of the voice too. I fucking love Voice Australia. When I was in Australia, I watched so much Voice Australia, and they did some <laughs> fucked up shit to people there. They did some fucked up like shit. What? They like they had these brothers on, and they did this whole package. And it was like we're very competitive, and we're both hot, and we're both gonna get on the Voice. And then they audition one after the other, and the one gets on, one gets on, and the other does not. Jesus. And it is they do that shit a lot, though. It's heartbreaking. On X, uh, no, not X Factor. On the New American Idol, which I fully hope doesn't come back. There was like this one girl who was like, "I want to be a pop star," and I'm my name is like Mackenzie or something. Was, <laughs> my name is Mackenzie. Oh, no. I'm from uh, whatever the fuck town, and girl, I'm a pop star. Okay, look at my short, short dress and my my fucking amazing hair. Okay, and the sister the was like, "Ali, hi, my name is um." <sighs> Rebecca and I am her sister and, about it. and um, you know I play the guitar definitely it's one of my interests but I'm here to watch her oh my god it's and, Allie pre shallow and, and Allie like, post Katy Perry like listens to Mackenzie sing and she's like take me <laughs> down like I'm a domino and they're like wow that was kind of good wow and she's like I have a sister and they're like wow let's see her and she just comes in with her guitar like what am I doing here it's so staged and she does this like transcendent performance of like I can make you ah! love me and they're all crying and they're like you're a star you can both go to Hollywood but you're a star and Mackenzie is like um hello what about me Mackenzie? you never heard them again I <laughs> love this play this one act <laughs> play so that we actually, just saw I, yes. I, I'm writing the play take it <laughs> off Broadway bitch take it off it's my Broadway. one woman show <laughs> Mackenzie Rebecca. Mackenzie. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it. You must. I will do it. I, I have caveats. I mean, Matt and I are trying to write the show that I just had this idea where we should write. I want I want us our next our next live show to be our like next play to be like Charlie's Angels ish. We say our next play because before you all knew who we even were, we were doing Ars Nova show called Night, Night Soap. Soap. Which is truly my proudest work. It's our greatest effort, and there's no record of it. No record of it. We might do it again. Um, I well, we're would, speaking with would the, go. the playwright du jour here. Playwright du jour. I haven't <laughs> written a play in years. Don't. <laughs> You've written plays for the screen. Yeah, plays for the screen. Plays for the screen. <laughs> plays for the screen. As they're called. I'm working on new scripts. Oh, I may be tough. trying to get staffed soon. Okay. Okay, getting I'm staffed. Ma- I'm gonna make an effort to get Los staffed. Angeles staffing. Hope so. Oh, I, he's, I gonna be, he's gonna be a little Los Angeles baby with me. I think oh, I'm gonna go I'm January gonna steal through March. Him. Don't steal. I'm gonna steal him. We're going I'm to. Gonna become we're, gonna start, we're gonna start our own podcast called Le Pi Couchou. <laughs> Le petit cochon. Le petit cochon. I'm going to become one of the LA gays and we're going to play that game with our phones on our forehead. Oh, heads, heads up, up with only <laughs> best supporting actress winners. Wow, that was the most stressful moment in my entire life watching. You were shady fucking... about it. No, I wasn't shady, but like I was just like, oh, I'm out of my. It's a here. very different end, I will say, <laughs> out there. And I, I, I can talk about it because I know none of them support me and are listening right now. No! But, um, I don't no. think any of them listen to this. I part. love my friends. I do. I do. I love my friends out there so much. They are so important to me. They keep me afloat. They keep you grounded, um, girl. They keep me grounded. The thing is, like, I know that if I were to move out there, that's who I would hang out with. Yeah, of course. They're all so I, I mean, there's, all there's, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're great. But I will say, like, one of the, the things that um, if you're moving across the country and leaving your closest friends behind, one of the things that I think was really hard for me when I was in L.A. was that I tried to replace you yeah. guys with them and, and they're like, different try people. to make like I try to experience the same things that I did with you guys with them uh-huh. and as soon as I dropped that in my brain and I was like oh no they're like different friends and like it's a different kind of friendship yeah. and still good like and still very deep and loving and whatever I was so much happier and healthier <gasps> because I wasn't trying to be like I need a, my Bowen you yeah. know and you will be my new Bowen right right you know? right because right, right. like, oh there is no new Bowen there's only one there's only one is there only one me? There's a couple of mats. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of mats in my life. That there I are love that. Several mats. <laughs> Basic beach. Several mats. It's hard. LA is hard. This year's. Listen, I'll say it. Like oh. I always feel like this. Uh, the other thing I, I feel when I do this podcast is I am coming off the heels of like a huge professional failure in some aspect and it's been a tough year it's been a tough year and it's i feel a like year. it's been a talking about failure is like 
is important as yeah. as talking about successes. And I said this to you guys via text the other day because people I, and I get that like my version of a failure, quote unquote, over the past year is graded on a curve over the course of my career. And like, sure. if I if you told me six years ago that this is what failure These would, would be, look your like, failures, yeah, it would be insane. But like, Truly. and but you have to understand because like people are watching from social media, and I do think that this year for me, it's been about half as good as I've made it seem on social media, sure. but twice as good as uh, it is in my own mind, sure. you know? And it's just hard, you know? Like, I've had... Uh, uh, it just doesn't feel like I'm going into 2019 with any, like, anything new I feel the under my cap, exact you know? same way, and I also know that, like, if I were to actually get over myself for a second and look at myself from the outside in, I'd be like, well, you're just being like a fatalist. And I know that you have those yes. tendencies as well. I've never really been like, like that until this year. And now it's like, I, I, I think I'm experiencing things that I'm like uh, perceiving as failures for the first time consecutively, personally, professionally, mm -hmm. sort of emotionally, like in terms of self-confidence. Right. And that's just like, I think actually a good experience because it keys you into the reality of this industry that we're trying to do yeah. and also the reality of being an adult. Yeah. And the reality of life, which is that not everything just happens. And either... It's not as clean. It's not a clean right. upward trajectory. It's like sometimes, it, you know... And that seems like so basic to say. No, but... We but all I'm, know that about the industry, but it's just like, it's hard to explain. But you have to be reminded. This is my thing, is that no matter where you're positioned and like if you do feel like that if you do feel like in at any given moment you are being successful or failing, like there's really nothing to do with that. You, you don't, there's nothing to do with that information. Yeah. There's right. no actionable thing that you do with that. So like, right. Know. I think it was something that bothers me sometimes. And like, this is something that actively bothers me is like, but I wish I didn't let it is the, just the money aspect of things. Yeah. Like when I feel like friends leave my tax bracket, Mm -hmm. I'm always like, oh, now I've, and I, that's like something that's, and maybe people that listen to this can relate to that. Just like constantly trying to, especially in a creative career, like earn enough money to like keep up with the Joneses in a way. Cause, yeah, you know, yeah, cause yeah. I think with social media, I was talking to Sudi about this today. I was talking about how I have issues with my self-confidence lately, like in every area of my life. And she's like, it's social media. And oh. I think, I think it's like actually really true well and you know and i i spoke about this earlier on a different forever dog podcast but this <sighs> is in the year two where i realized for myself that the apps and i still use the apps especially mm -hmm. when i am traveling. on the road or traveling or whatever but on uh, so I, I worked at gay careers famously this year mm -hmm. and i had sex with some of the hottest people i've ever had sex with people outside of my tax bracket looks wise yes, you know yes. and <laughs> outside of his tax bracket looks, looks wise, wise. Yes, yes. and and what i realized and i have i have been connected to the my my self-worth to the apps mm. and my how i test on the apps oh and like God, you can't and in a way that like I, I realized like on the boat where none of us were on apps because we were at sea um <laughs> <laughs> this, is that my person it is like i do so much better when I'm face to face with someone and they test better in the room. I test better in the room. <laughs> I test better in the room. And it is because like I think people my pictures are like fine, but my personality is what carries me over through, you know? Mm -hmm. like, people want to fuck your personality. It's tr weird. And I've always been like personality does not matter. Gay men do not care about personality. But, I think that's so incorrect. But there is an energy. No, because I, I agree like there are cer certain people in my life who I will get crushes on where I'm like, this person is physically repulsive to me. <laughs> <laughs> this person is disgusting. Stop. And yet, I want to... And yet, I want them to ruin me. My pee in their pee. You know, wow. like, I want yeah. it all. That's cute. Honestly, um, I thought I had a crush on someone for such a long time. And I think it's because my brain convinced me that I had a crush on them. Also, that person is very much a player in the social media game. Where like they are putting forward a very specific image. I think every single person does that. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is that there is so much to do with like your brain convincing you, I like this person because I feel like I should like them. Mm. And then you get to know, especially in the gay community, I think it's like, oh, that attractive single person, I like them. Uh -huh. And then you're like, you get to know them and you're like, no, that person is like a friend to me. Yeah. And nothing about this energy is like sexual or romantic, but your brain has tricked you mm. into thinking 
Scooby-Doo. Well, I found that I have to, I have to, I, I came to this a couple of years ago and I think we've talked about this before, but there is as like an Asian person in the gay community, there is a weird undercurrent of like entitlement with guys that are attracted to me. Like I do feel like there is like sometimes running underneath the surface of my uh, interactions with people who are attracted to me where they're like, you should be so glad you are indebted to me oh, for yeah. being That's attracted to you. Crazy. It's, it's and, and I get it from strangers on apps and I get it from people in my real life where I what? think they because they are aware of the power dynamics within mm-hmm, our community, mm-hmm. they think, well like what I, a catch for him. I think yeah, and I think it's that. And I think it's like sometimes I get this weird sense that like guys are like, what a hero I am for being attracted to Someone of a different and I don't race. think it's me projecting. I don't think it's like no. Ever, I, think I it's like, really I get, and it's something I struggle def- with. You're probably of, definitely right. They, those guys think that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, wow, I'm dating an Asian. <laughs> cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's so fucked up. But whatever. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, I I can't even tell you guys where I'm at with in terms of the self esteem stuff. I'm like, I don't even. I feel like it's. I feel like it's showing. In a way, I think your confidence has been so far up, 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 up since even just the summer. I'm really? Saying, I think it's emanating from you in a different way. Post- like I'm getting confidence from you in a way that I haven't seen in a really? long time. Post trip, it helped. Yes. Acid, acid trip. Acid trip. And uh, someone at this table might be experiencing it for the first time later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> why, are we, why are we being... There's three people. I know, no, no, no. no. Um, uh, we're doing a little upstate garrison trip. We're going upstate. We're going upstate. We um, might uh, um, venture into the woods. And I am... <laughs> and I, I am... Wor- I'm, I'm like... I was talking about this in therapy. I was like, it's not going to be the same as that first time on Fire Island. Mm, nope. But Never it will, will be different and beautiful in its own way. I'm interested one. in having the experience. What do you hope to get out of the trip? Um... Change my life. No, um, I don't know. Um, Mackenzie's. Uh, Mackenzie's. I want to become Mackenzie's. Uh, <laughs> I kind of am Mackenzie's. No, um, no. Yeah, and you are, Rebecca. I, I'm here's, Rebecca. What, here's what I want. Here's what I want. I want to clear my mind so that I'm like, I want. I would like to clear my mind on this trip, in so that I can just access what I like about myself again. Because mm. I'm telling you, like. Every time I, oh, this is really no. Say I, it. No, no, no. I, I, I think it's I important. I think it's very, important to talk about failure. I felt not attractive. I felt not funny. I've just felt like I'm forcing everything. I also think it's because, I, you know, this is whatever. But like, this was the year that like my ex boyfriend from my only relationship I've ever had like truly moved on. Someone sort of broke my heart that I had feelings for. Um, I op- I felt like I was trying to open myself up and things didn't really happen. Like professionally, I had a big disappointment. Uh, it le- you know what I mean? Like I-, I, someone I'm directly in, like I've always, you know, it's just not easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also like they're all growing experiences. And I will say this, I feel an intense seasonal depression at the end of the summer. Like mm. the humidity here and the constant weighing down of like, just the weather makes me really sad. Mm -hmm. And now that the weather is a little bit colder and I feel like a little bit of a crisp in the air, I literally just, my body is like responding in a way. insane. I'd rather be drenched in sweat. I I hear you. I hear you. But also to be honest with you, like, I don't necessarily always feel great in like a tank top. Like I, 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 I really don't. Like I, I, I just don't. I don't have a great self image, and I think that I'm super self conscious and aware of myself because of social media sometimes, and especially as our social media platform has grown. I, I really do think this for me, but like this has been a a good personal year with the body positivity stuff because it has been something clicked in my brain about really trying to come to where I am and liking what I see and it just is not an everyday thing I'm sure. constantly frustrated still but like it is just so much about like not find it's like f- not finding the validation outside I mean it's just so basic again but like I don't know I went to Folsom in San Francisco yeah. this year and I found that like it again it was a sense of like people just walking around all body types all shapes and sizes and it it just didn't get the sense that anyone was there being like, I want everyone to look at me. Everyone was there being like, this is, I am, I am loving myself right now. Right, right, yeah. right. In a way that just felt really positive. And I think you yeah. look great. Well, the thing is, Thank I you. mean, like, I, obviously, here, and here's the thing. It's like, 
Well, thank you for saying that. But it's like, I just, you are the person that's in your body. Right. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. like, the other day I tweeted out, like, and I ended up deleting it because somebody didn't like it. And I kind of was like, this is, I don't need to have tweeted this. I said, I actually kind of like that my body is turning into pudding. And Wait, somebody who had a problem with that. Yeah. Somebody tweeted at me and said, it's annoying when skinny people say this. And I tweeted back, um, I understand where you're coming from. I also think it's annoying when people publicly police people's thoughts on their own body yeah. but like i think we can agree that it's tough to be happy no matter what right yeah. we'll and i said we'll see if you unfollow me he didn't he said lol sure i just think that you shouldn't understand that there are people out there who work really hard and for a long time for something that you have like happily stumbled into he, he said and i i think it's this I, thing it's, uh, that there are a lot well, of look, but i understand where he's coming from and this is what i mean to say is it's like i am obviously aware of the fact that i'm privileged physically i have always had a good metabolism it's just like i, I like I've, i'm thin like mm -hmm, i just mm -hmm, am mm -hmm. but like when your body starts to change yes. you notice it and so and it's just and also, like in the gay community, when there's a lot of people that are ripped, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people like I went when I went to L.A., I felt invisible. Guys sometimes will will like reach out to me, and I I'm obsessed with the fact that like if they have a better body than me, I absolutely cannot go on a date with them. Oh, I I'm scared, and it's just I like, will only go on dates with people with better bodies than me. <laughs> I, I'm also only invisibility kidding. is all is is the Asian narrative. Yeah. I know, and I'm also thing. and I'm also aware of that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I'm aware of the fact that like. I, I I don't know. It's crazy for for someone like me to complain, but no, I don't no, have no, good not, self confidence. No, no, no. no. Here's the I'm not telling you to stop complaining. No, no, no. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing is like everybody's on their own fucking journey, yes. and like is allowed to fee be in their feelings in ever in whatever way they want. I don't think I I don't quite understand what that person saying that to you like what they thought they were accomplishing because it's not like you have this huge platform that you are uh, uh, like trying to. Uh, set your journey on the same level as theirs no, or no, saying no. that like you are allowed to feel how you are like I feel bad about my body sometimes too and I look insanely good yes you know? so it is just like I'm and I'm allowed that I'm allowed to feel the way I feel about it you know when I feel about it I I totally agree and I feel like you know the reason I took it down is because I was like you know I don't need to have no, tweeted this yes. you know and I, I constantly a, do that too sure. I'm a big proponent of separate your thoughts into what you need to say and what you what you yes. want to say right. you know what i mean and i didn't I need to say that and so whatever i think it's always just a good thing as long as it's as long as you're emotionally sort of bouncing back from a moment like this where you're talking about failures openly you're talking about insecurities openly as long as you're not keeping it in suspension where you're like i shouldn't be reacting this way or i should be reacting this way more extremely where you're literally just like like pulling a tense line on it and you're not letting it you're not giving it any slack to just have its own weight mm -hmm. whatever I'm, I'm speaking very abstractly but like i don't know just like talk about it but also like um feel your own feel your own sort of feet in that moment you know it's like just be present with like how you're feeling it's one know. tweet too one that's tweet. the thing it's not like you're one of these people who like relishes in it. i think there was a real there was a long moment and I, I hate to be a fucking nanette about it but there was a long time in my comedy where i leveraged my lack of of esteem about myself um as a comedic sort of like wedge for and it did not make me feel good and like it was also dishonest and it was because it's like i oh i always looked fine mm -hmm. you know and like to leverage like my negativity about my own body and the audience never it's never a worthwhile no punchline it's like the audience never is loving it you yeah know? you did one tweet you know you didn't make it your brand and i think for a long time especially my early years in new york i really did make my uh the way i felt about myself negatively feeling ugly like a big part of my brand you know and that and now i've flipped and i will say though this is this is a different side of the frustration for me is that um i appreciate when people are like oh you're hot like i and mm -hmm. i get it and i i post the thirst traps i like yes. i i i want that validation because mm -hmm. i do work very hard on this part it's the my body is Chicken milk. truly the only fucking thing i can control in my life right now and that is like so i focus a lot on it i do put chicken breasts in a blender and drink it with two quarts of water. Yes. Um, <laughs> wow. It's disgusting, but it works. It and works. the thing is, is like, but then I do feel this sense of responsibility because like I have made it my mission to be like, 
Asian men are hot and like I am hot and like owning that and being at the forefront and changing the yes. narrative around the way we view Asian men and gay Asian men specifically. But it, now I do feel like I'm moving into territory where I'm like, well, fuck, now I can't talk about um, feeling ugly or feeling insecure about no, this, but, that, or the other you know thing what? because I feel like I have to be like, I've always gone uh, the a, other a way about I, feel, I, I, I have to like, you, you know. You can't bring a whole other group of people into into that space with you because... And this is my thing, like half of the, like like most of those people don't even know wh- what you're going through. Like they don't even know, they don't even give a shit. I don't know, right? Like I, whatever. Okay, I'll, I will just openly say this. I was thinking very deeply when I was screen testing for SNL, I was like, I have to like do Asian people proud. I have to, I'm mm. doing this for this whole group of yeah. people. And my therapist was like, that is crazy because there's no way that you're going to get through this if you're going to saddle yourself with that responsibility that, responsibility that is all invented. Do not bring those people into the room with you as you're writing, as you're preparing, as you're auditioning. Do not do that. That will crush you. And it's mm-hmm. not real. And so, it I don't is, know. But it's such a fine line, though, isn't it? Because like, representation matters. Like totally. We're constantly saying that. And so I do feel like... Uh, this pressure to be, you know, uh, uh, to, to be, I, I have to be careful about like the way I present myself now, if I want to continue to be, you know, uh, but I don't want, I, I agree. Like, I don't want to bring those people into the room. With sure, me, sure. You know, cause I want to feel bad. And I like sometimes want to be in my feelings about, and I want to tweet shit. Like mm-hmm. um, I, I literally have been to my, the, my dermatologist in New York twice this week and I've been diagnosed with rosacea. And that is a hard pill for me to swallow as someone who has always struggled with my skin. And that is like, that's something I can't control. And it's like, I want to talk about that. And I want to be like, I feel like shit. And then I have this like little voice now in the back of my brain where it's like, no, you've created this character for yourself online through social media. That is like an unwavering source of confidence within this, uh, the toxic, the toxicity of the gay community. And so you have to be. Bitch, tweet about your rosacea. Do it. (laughs) You have to, <laughs> bitch. Tweet about <laughs> your, your rosacea. <laughs> Rule of culture. Um, so it is. It's just like weird, and, it, and we are in this weird place with representation, where I feel like we are getting to the point where, like, there's you and there's me, and there's a yeah. lot of other gay Asian men mm-hmm. that are like coming up, and other gay people. I think gay men in general are like sort of like stepping forward and being there, and and so like there's plenty of us. It's no longer we're no longer in a place totally. where there's just like one, scarcity, and we're right? like pulling up the ladder after us mm-hmm, after someone's mm-hmm. else's success. But it does feel like there, we're still in a place where like people are going to my, like look at every little move we make and try and extrapolate and pathologize our community for that like every time i say something i hate it when people are like oh gay gay guys be like this you know in response to something and it's like no that's just me like i can i want to be seen as an individual yes and it's just it's frustrating yes i mean i feel like and it's only gonna get worse for us by the way i know i know and i'm thinking right like we like I don't know. Maybe I, I'm thinking the three of us will listen back to this episode like two years from now and be like, oh my goodness, LOL at us being like at this snapshot in time where it's like, who knows like what where we'll be at in like two years, you know? Like I just, that's the, the nice thing and the terrible thing about our little racket is that like we don't know what things will look like short term, long term mm-hmm. is what I meant. But like, I don't know. It's like don't saddle yourself with that though. You ask the question like, what are you trying to get out of like <laughs> this trip upstate or whatever, or like whatever it is that or trying to be happy at like I guess I'm just trying to do any little thing to open myself up to just like really being excited about myself again. You know what I mean? Cause there was there was so much time in my twenties where I was like so excited about myself and I was a big fan of myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that now it's just like it's just another phase and I really think you know say what you want about like astrology thing but like the return to Saturn like people would talk about it and they'd warn me about it like oh 28 is going to come and like you're going to it was crazy because the moment like the I, that the corner turned on my 28th year it was like oh there they go there go the good times and it was just like there's just been this like nine or ten month block where i open my eyes and i'm like fuck like i don't know if i'd call myself depressed but i I would call myself like baseline unhappier than i have been in in a long time and it's just like so yeah i mean i i i'm not trying to buy into the whole like oh do this hallucinogenic and it changes your life but it seems to have a positive effect on a lot of people i care about so i'm willing to try it (laughs) 
I will say it was I I you did loved not, it. I loved it because it was like going. It was like an amusement park in my brain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said that doing acid was like <laughs> was the same experience of watching Mother. Um, but it, fun, yes, but, but like, fun. Ha, but you fun. ripped someone's heart out. Yeah, I love Mother. <laughs> P.S. But I, uh, <laughs> but like the, the the like the latter half of Mother, where she's like walking through the house and it's like all chaotic, and that seems like very negative, but like in a very positive, in a way. fun way, like where every corner you turn, there was like another uh, like adventure yeah. uh, to have. But I didn't mentally have anything. I will I I will say this. I, and Henry Kurfersky, if you're listening, I I fucking love you. Um, but he, there would be moments where Henry. Oh, where I'd be like, I just feel like I'm outside of time right now. And then Henry would whisper, he'd be like, that's because time isn't real. And I'd be like, no, no, I will not fall for it. I was like, don't He's try. Another planet Do not it. try. No, I know, I know, um, I know. Um, yeah. I think was... I'm too far gone, Henry. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, but the one thing I'll say about acid is when I would go into the house alone and when it did feel like, like crazy and it was, it did feel like mother, I haven't seen it, but um, <laughs> I would go, but I. But the the nice thing was going to the bathroom and looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, "Oh, cool! Like I'm happy with this." That was like the the big takeaway was that I was like I felt good about myself and walking walking down the boardwalks on in the pines is always a harrowing experience for your self confidence because you're seeing like chiseled guy after chiseled guy. Didn't walk even by. go. Didn't even go this year because I couldn't handle it. Sure, and it's and and I understand that. But but while I was tripping, did not give a shit about anyone else. It was just about our unit walking down to the dock to watch the sunset, walking back together, and that was enough. Tuning out everyone else because they didn't matter. Because mm-hmm. because who cares? I don't know these people, and so and and that was sort of a, a nice. That was my little nice mental, um, relief. So anyway. Spiritual wow, hunt. I love that we had this convo. Spiritual hunt. I think it's important to talk. Oh, God, I'm sitting here and I'm just like, I, I can't imagine it was very funny. But no. you they know, don't what? always need. You to know be what? Funny. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck we're, you. We're, fuck you. If you didn't. Fuck you. You fuck got you two for, other full episodes <laughs> with Joel. Fuck you for coming also, here. Also, we were very funny talking about a Star Is Born. Yeah. We were very funny talking about Venom. There you go. But we are three dimensional. Sometimes even four dimensional. People sometimes, sometimes even, even four dimension. Fourth dimension is time. After and all. if you like us, you have to like all of us. Ooh, Mackenzie's is bad. Mackenzie's. God, I think it's time. I think it's time. Okay. Brian, I think wow, so, I actually forgot until literally they hit the record button that I had to do this, and so I'm. I have to give myself a little time to think. <laughs> it's I okay. It won't um, be long. Matt and I will go first. Matt, Just want to say one? one thing though. Um, I don't think so. Honey, live is coming on November 30th to the Bell House, and also December 5th to the Regent. In Los Angeles, I'm very excited about that. I may or may not have Joel as a co-host. Oh, we, <laughs> We're gonna find out. I think it's about. I think it's pretty much confirmed. Well, I I'm very gonna, much have. I'm to, gonna I, send an email after this podcast if, after we're done here. I, I want it to be you because there literally, you who else would it be? Yeah. I, and I, I mean, there's, you know what? There's, there's plenty tons of people. of people I could reach yeah. out to. Actually, <laughs> actually, I would have. I would. Have, I'm thinking now, and there's okay, lots. okay. But it's, gonna be me. Me. it's gonna be me. <laughs> um, but also, um, uh, November 26th. Uh, we're doing uh, Queers Live at Joe's Pub, which is the Las Culturistas hosts an event, which is not a direct recreation of, but inspired by Divas Live. So those are some live shows that are coming up, you guys. Yes. So hope to see you there. Love that. Um, okay. Matt Rogers, do you have an I Don't Think So Honey? I think you, um, you said I you do have, have a... an I Don't Think So Honey. Okay. This is Matt Rogers. I do. I Don't Think So Honey. His time starts now. I Don't Think So Honey, people who ask me to help you with your Halloween costume. Ah! Fuck you. Why are you putting emotional labor on me? And also, it's just like... Oh my God. Now you're going to like make me try to come up with a clever thing for you. It's like... It's like... Pop quiz. It's it's like emotional and like intellectual work because Halloween costumes in this day is day and age. You have to be so many things: hot, funny, like subversive, or else you're basic. Like a Halloween costume is a lot, and bitch, I haven't figured out my own. Thirty seconds. So why do I have to like now invest energy and time wow. into your costume? Yes, and it's yeah. everyone does this. Uh, what should I be for Halloween? And you don't even give me a direction that you want to go in. Whoa! It's like you guys. It's like how are you feeling? Like do you want to be comfortable? Fifteen seconds. Do you want to be a hot? Like, how are you feeling right now mm-hmm. about the way to present yourself? Like, wow. and honestly, this is really about me not knowing what I want to be for Halloween. Oh, and it's like, I haven't even thought seconds. about it. It's like, give me time to think about me. Then let me think about you, bitch. I don't think so, honey. And that's one minute. I, wow. What a, what a gorgeously felt. I'm sorry, Nico. You've asked me several <laughs> times what I think you should be for Halloween. And he I, asked me too. He's been sending me texts about this as girl, well. That's the most Nico thing. I've ever heard. <laughs> just kidding. Love you, Nico. No, he's, no, he's the best. It's just like, I, 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 Nico, I don't know what I'm going to be for Halloween. Yeah. But y- Go. 
No, I'm. I was just, and he sent me a picture of what I thought was a good costume, and then he said that you said he absolutely could wait, not be. You it. thought that was a good costume? I thought it was funny. See, that's what, what, was what I'm the saying. Costume? It's like and it I was also, like a house. It's like a creepy house. I don't fucking know. It was like a, some sort of house. He's like sometimes too smart for me. I'm some like the sort of references house. that he pulls out. I'm just like he's an extremely intellectual person, and it's just like. And he's like, but also I'll be shirtless. And I was like, I don't get this. I can't see this. Mm. And I was just like, and here's the thing, which you just did, which is then I give my idea and people say, no, that's horrible. And it's like, well, bitch, I thought it was good. And also you asked me. I'm not the right person. I hate Halloween. I famously hate Halloween. I barely ever come up with a costume. I I was like a slutty minion for like five years running. I Um, love slutty minion. Slutty minion's timeless. Slutty minion was good. See, the thing is I always think of something great like the day of, but I'm not ready to think about it. We had a good one last year. I'm going as Leather Jughead this year. Oh, that's that's cute. Last year, me and Bowen were um, uh, Celeste and I Patch Renata from- Oh, that was good. That was good. That was good. good. And I had my long sleeve shirt and I was just like, really, I had a secret all night yeah but my thing is yeah once every <laughs> one it's only once every three four years that i come up with something solid and the rest and like i have nothing this year and i don't even know what i'm doing i might be a slut this year cool be a slut do, do what does that want. look like to you a sailor <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love that. that's that's a direction that's a start i know but also then i'm just like now am i basic but yeah it is basic who cares fucking who cares i don't oh. know I, i'm gonna come up with a good costume i just like you guys i i and also, I think this will come out on November 7th. So it'll Halloween will already have come and gone. So I guess you can go to my Instagram or whatever. I'll have trotted myself around and yeah. tell me if it was a good costume or not. Great. Love that. Anyway. Cool. Um, okay. And I had a lot of I don't think so, honeys, that I could have done tonight. One of which is the picture that Bowen posted of himself smoking a cigarette. Okay. Shot by Alex Schaefer. Um, it directly promotes... inspired. I it, it was directly inspired from this anime screenshot of this guy post coitus, pink bed sheets, smoking a cigarette. And I was like, I am gonna recreate that. So um, blame that. Okay, my turn. Yeah, this is Bowen. <laughs> I don't think so, honey. And his time starts now. I don't think so, honey. Scorpio shaming. Scorpio <laughs> shaming is hack. Scorpio season's coming up. Guess who's a Scorpio? Yeah, me. Guess who doesn't believe in fucking astrology? Me, bitch. <laughs> Okay, read a Carl Sagan book because the alignment of stars hundreds of light years away and their relative positioning to the sun and moon has no bearing on your personality traits or that your 28th year is a hard one, okay? <laughs> Sometimes it so happens that we have hard years and and Matt, I'm sorry that, that it coincided with this pseudoscience that is being seconds. pushed on my poor unsuspecting friends who, uh, who didn't have a science education, who only succeeded <laughs> in writing in humanities <laughs> on the SAT. <laughs> I am here to tell all of you to free everyone of the shackles of astrology. It's bullshit. It's pseudoscience. It's harmful. It comes from the same place as people touting, you know, it's, 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 it's astrology is Donald Trump saying fake news at CNN. It's the same thing. It's false information being peddled for personal gain. And that's one minute. I said that it's a bizarre thing to say, but it was just a coincidence and sure. funny that at 28, the return to Saturn, quote unquote, happened. I didn't even get, to, I, I, I mostly just shot on astrology, but people who Scorpio shame who are like, I, when I, when I tell everyone I'm a Scorpio, when they ask me what my sign is, because I will they never go, voluntarily offer that information, <laughs> they go, oh, it's good. and I'm just like, please spare me of this fucking shock that you that you, you have misplaced you should you should i found myself asking someone what their sign was recently and i wanted to fucking run into the wall as How hard as i could you. i was like i'm so sorry i have to i have to end I'm, it right now never been more i'm a double pisces and the best sex i've Same. ever had has been with scorpios there you go i mean but also scorpios and pisces is a good thing yeah. that's why i mean but also that's not, not that i believe real. we'd break <laughs> we'd break the internet if we released that only fans bowen <laughs> Oh, yes. my <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! The Lost the, Culturistas porn. R slash Gaijin. I sketch them the while they fuck. Se- the, yeah. Yes, the Gaijin subreddit it would, would be, go wild. It would be a. It would be a recreation of the scene from Memoirs of a Geisha where she yes. sticks her fingers in the trainee's butt yes. or vagina to see uh-huh. if she's wet, and I would be that character, and I would stick it. Thank you. Up my butt, and he would be in so bus. in his bosom, and, and, and he'd be the wettest, and, and you know be what? So wet, and I'd be like, oh. And and we will not pixelate our genitalia. No, no. we'll not pixelate. No, 
full field. I'm going to fucking Tokyo this year. <gasps> yes. And I am so excited. For New Year's, right? To, for New Year's. So and I am so go. excited to be in a place. I've never been to Asia. Yeah. And so I've never uh, I've never experienced what it's like to be white. Um, and <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to sit in like the middle of an intersection and just As a see majority people member. Look like me. Yeah. Oh, and you will be their king. You just go to the Eagle. They will flock to you. Are, uh, okay. We'll have to talk off cam about this because okay. I'm we are of, we are of course uh, on camera as we're filming on an OnlyFans. See us on Twitch. <laughs> I've um, never I've never done gay nightlife in Asia anywhere because oh, okay. I'm with my family and they would be like, "What the fuck?" Um, but <laughs> I'm sure you would okay. do very well. Um, okay. So I thought of I thought of the one that's going to be the the front runners though. Just so everyone is aware, was one was going to be I don't think so, honey. People who are late to their own podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then the other one was going to be, I don't think so, honey, a, an actual comedian who told us that or told me that um, I the that real comedians don't post shirtless pics of themselves on their Instagram. Who the fuck is Which that? Which is an outrageous thing to say. Who said and it, that? And of course, it was a straight comic. And it's like, name. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to name names. <laughs> Why? Um, Lisa Traeger was here. She named names. <laughs> That's fair. He'll never hear. It was the Sam Morrell comment. And it was actually, oh, he, he said it to Mateo. He didn't say it to me. But it was a, a general comment about gay men and our Instagram presences uh, and our as comedians. And it's like, listen, here's the thing. I love Sam. He's one of the best joke writers in the industry right now. And But the fact is, is uh, I'm sorry, but gay men and straight women do not get laid for our fucking talent in the comedy industry. So I'm sorry I have to work for the fucking dick that I pull. There you Bingo go. Bingo coin. Okay. Bingo coin. Um, so, but now I'm going to do the real. I don't think so. Okay. Honey. And this is Joel Kim booster his i don't think so honey time starts now i don't think so honey blue planet 2 featuring all these fucking <laughs> birds on the episode oh that i watched God. in my hotel room the other night <laughs> i am tuning into blue planet ah. to see creatures from the sea yes. honey i want to see creatures that are living in the depths of the ocean i want to see a fish that can scream okay <laughs> i want to see all these creatures that science is just now discovering because it is in the most <laughs> unexplored part of our our planet and you're telling me that I'm tuning in and I'm seeing seconds. on Blue Planet all these fucking birds that are flying around because they live on an uh, island that is adjacent to the sea and are sometimes eaten by fish that is not an interesting storyline for me I can go outside in New York City and look out the window if I want to see a seconds. fucking bird like a pigeon that is clearly the product of incest no sweetie I do not want to see birds on Blue no, Planet sweetie. too that is like akin to watching a movie Five about seconds. the Great Wall of China star Matt Damon. Ah! Okay. And that's one minute. Very good. I, I will make a definitive statement right now. Oh my God. Joel Kim Booster, the single best. I don't think so, honey. Uh, just hands down, best best track record, best best base, best stats. You feel this way? I feel this way. <laughs> I, feel this way. I do. Joel is the best. <laughs> think about think about what he's brought I, I every think, show. I think he's excellent. At I it. think he's he's the, been the most consistent. He will give you the full spectrum, the full range of stuff. It's It can be personal, it can be professional, or whatever. It can be about some random ass thing like Blue Planet 2. He also does do it at the desired cadence. Yes, mm -hmm. with setups, with punchlines, everything you could ever want in an animal. And at so the funny. speed at which we... I will, it. I will say my my new biggest pet peeve with I don't think so, honey, is previously, of course, it was not I, doing I culture, did, not doing culture. Yes. My new one is, is I do think that there, there is something intrinsic, like there is something so important about the repetition of honey, honey, the honeys and the, or, like, or the equivalents, like the, the sweeties, equivalents, the yes, sweeties, yes, yes, yes. sweetie, darling, darlings. It, it is it, Miss I, Contessa. Sometimes when people don't even say the honey in the first Line. It I know. Throws, it throws, it throws like when I say me. I don't think so, so this, I'm yeah. always like, you don't really get you, it. You don't you get missed, it. You have misunderstood the I will say this: Max Silvestri marched his straight ass no, in here a couple good. weeks ago and fucking nailed. It was nailed. a really great one. Nailed. But here, I'll say this, and Max, I'm gonna see you on Sunday, and I'll tell this to your fucking face. Uh oh, cute face. It's a cute face. I, I don't think they should be written down. I don't think they should be pre-written. I don't think you should be reading from a script, sweetie. <laughs> You know that's that's interesting because we've never done that, never once. Mm -mm. You're 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 okay to sometimes, write them. Sometimes at the expense of the I don't think so, yes. honey. I will say you game. can't have written it. You can't have written it, or yeah, just it removes. Well, actually, no. Reading it off a phone or off a piece of paper removes polish. I almost don't think it should even be rehearsed. I think it should come 
from the gut and the heart and the mind and the body and the soul and the spirit and the whimsy. Hair, body, face. Mm -hmm. And the hair and the body and the face. I want everyone to read my interview with Alyssa Edwards. Yes, it's very good. <laughs> Matt calls calls her out on other queens saying that she's a diva. And, he, and she, she has says, the best now hold response. on one second. Am I a diva? 100%. But do I show up at the gig and deliver Alyssa Edwards every single time? Yes, I do. Now, as to someone who will call me unprofessional, I'm not a dark sided diva. I am not a dark sided diva. Am I a diva? Yes, am I? I'm not a dark sided, dark -sided diva. diva. And I don't think I don't, I have, have, I don't, I don't have a writer. Think, I don't have a writer like the rest of these girls. I don't need fruits, grapes, grapes, she or says, fruits. She says, she says, candies. I don't need grapes a million back of Sanchez or grapes or fruits <laughs> in my dressing room, honey. I don't have these demands. Wait, can I say really quickly? I didn't know that I my reps had created a writer for me. Wow. And did not did not honey. ask me before my input. And I went. I don't did think this, so, honey. I did this college recently, no. and I walked into this like classroom that they had made into a makeshift green room for me, and there were two just freestanding mirrors in there and I was like oh that's cool um, and like a fruit plate and I was like okay I'll eat this and then after the show I saw these two boys pick up the mirrors and they had to walk them across campus and I was like wait what's going on I was like why did you bring these in here and they were like well it says in your rider that you need two mirrors uh, and I was like oh, wh what what a monster Mr. Spaza <laughs> they have created a monster <laughs> like I need two mirrors I need to see myself from both angles oh Joel. my god God, we have to tell Joe that we need four mirrors. Four, we need four mirrors. mirrors. But Joel, you might have to just own it. And this is a moment where you have to become Allie red ha with red hair. With red hair. Why did you do that to me? Wow. I think this episode. Transformative and complete and full, honey. It yeah. had everything. And we had like, we had some real shit. We got real. I love that. I hope people liked it. I, I, I demand they, they do. I think that they do. And we got one of the best I don't think. And yes, uh, Come for me. Don't fucking... No, actually, no. Don't at me <laughs> for s declaratively saying that Joel Kim Booster is the... I'm including I'm including myself in this. I mean, I don't think we're the best. We're not the it. best, clearly. But Joel is a preeminent mind, a preeminent... I don't think so. At my full capability, me. I think when you take everyone into account, I think I could score... 93 out of 100 on a test. Yes. I don't think so, honey, test. I did not do well uh, at the Divas, though. I'm not a music person. And Divas, I famously, that was a weird I famously vibe. begged, I famously but begged I you not show. to air. But because oh, it was so bad. You were not the only one. You were one. not the only one. <laughs> um, and I think that's. I think that was the right call. That one's for us. It was yeah. a bizarre We give you show. everything. That one's I, for us. You should have come to Montreal. Did I fully jump into the splits? Yes. Did I injure my knee? Does it still pain me to this day? Is it recorded? Yes. It, it is a Eureka it's O'Hara moment. It's on my Instagram. Moment. Yeah. It's truly Go is. the doctor. I have. I have, Well, I'm seeing a physical therapist right now. Oh, okay. PT. You're fucking a physical therapist? I'm... Seeing a physical oh, therapist seeing. named Amanda, who is a bisexual <laughs> woman from Ohio. Love I love that. her. Love She's that. powerful. Mm -hmm. um, Dynamic and powerful. I just wanted to say my other I don't think so, honey, was going to be I don't think so, honey, dumping me. Um, mm. But I'll save that for another time. I actually have a series of I don't think so, honey, I'm really excited about, including I don't think so, honey, when people sound on the phone, hey, it's me. <laughs> I do that. State your name, honey. Hey, we don't me. need to do that anymore. We don't. No, we, we really don't. don't. We really don't. Hey, and then you just, and, and you're off to the races. Well, this is about to lock, clog in as the longest. I don't think I'm, oh God, last no, cold races ever, so. Every time I come, it's gotten a little bit longer. I really <laughs> like that. I always plan for it, too. I say next time we're going two hours. <laughs> we did block out two hours for this, yeah. truly. Why don't we do that to me? Yeah. Uh, please uh, check out Joy Fuck Club, the thing. November peaked. 9th uh, at the Bell House. Is it 10 p.m.? 9 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Um, Patty Harrison, Karen Chi, Ronnie Chang, mm. maybe Bo and Yang if the show goes well that week. Um, <laughs> oh, that's why you're not booked. Yeah, he's he's booked, but like you might just see a video of him. It might have to be me. Yeah. It might have to be. Kiko Suarez. Kiko Suarez. Oh, Kiko. Yeah. Lots, of fun, lots of fun games, too. We've got a longer slot than we did in San Francisco. So if you saw it right. in San Francisco, it's a different show. Honey. It's November 7th? 9th. No, 9th. 9th. Yes. Because yes, yes, I have a show Friday. on November 7th. Ooh. Straight pageant. Oh, fun. game show presents straight, straight pageant. pageant. Love that. Um, watches multiple straight men compete for each uh, for the title of Queen of the Straits. Honorarily gay as fuck. Um, well, uh, Joel, we love you. One, yeah. of, one of the one of the best. Love you. The best. We made the best. Um, okay, well, let's end in a song. I can't stop thinking about what you do to me. You keep keeping me from what I'm supposed to be. To me! To me. What did you do to me? me? Bye. <laughs> Forever. <laughs>
This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook.